Live, I'm Giuliano Casade. In the past few minutes, Buckingham Palace has announced that doctors are concerned for the Queen's health after examining her this morning. They've recommended Her Majesty remains under medical supervision. Palace officials say the Queen remains comfortable at her estate at Balmoral. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall have travelled to Balmoral. Prince William is also on his way. Here's the royal commentator, Robert Hardman. It's significant. Um, I mean, the last time um, the, the, the sort of statement, as it were, came came uh, out of the blue was to, to let us know um, earlier this year that she'd been diagnosed with COVID. But on the whole, the view is if um, if she's not uh, undergoing um, a sort of uh, some sort of hospital medical procedure, then these are private matters. Liz Truss has announced there'll be an energy price cap, which she says will save the average household £1,000 a year. This guarantee, which includes a temporary suspension of green levies, means that from the 1st of October, a typical household will pay no more than £2,500 per year for each of the next two years while we get the energy market back on track. Well, the Prime Minister also announced help for people who are not on gas. For those using heating oil, living in park homes or those on heat networks, we will set up a fund so that all UK consumers can benefit from equivalent support. And here's what she said about help for businesses. We will also support all businesses, charities and public sector organisations with their energy costs this winter, offering an equivalent guarantee for six months. After those six months, we will provide further support to vulnerable sectors, such as hospitality, including our local pubs. Liz Truss also confirmed these proposals will not be funded by a windfall tax, as she says that will undermine the national interest by discouraging investment. The new Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, will set out the expected cost of the package later this month. In other news, one in eight people in England are on the waiting list for operations and other types of care as the backlog in NHS hospital treatments continues to grow. Data shows there were 6.8 million people waiting for treatment at the end of July, which is an increase from 4.2 million before the pandemic. Ukrainian forces have begun a major counteroffensive in the east of the country. Western analysts believe they have broken through Russian lines and have taken some towns and villages in the Kharkiv region. Royal Mail workers at the Communication Workers Union are taking part in a strike over pay and working conditions. The union say a 2% pay rise was imposed on them, but Royal Mail says the union rejected an offer worth up to 5.5%. Those are the headlines. Just to reiterate, in the past few minutes, Buckingham Palace has announced that doctors are concerned for the Queen's health after examining her this morning. We'll have more updates as we get them this afternoon. Those are the headlines. Jonathan McKeith has the sport. Giuliano, thank you. Brighton manager Graham Potter didn't take training this morning amid speculation he's to become the next manager of Chelsea. He could make the move to London within the next 24 hours. He's already held talks with the club. Cricket and there'll be a pitch inspection at the Oval at 1.30. Rain has meant there's been no play so far on the opening day of the third test between England and South Africa. And Carlos Alcaraz says he does still doesn't know how he managed to come through his epic US Open quarter-final against Yannick Sinner. The 19-year-old saved a match point before winning in five sets at 10-3 in the morning. The voice of the UK. This is Five Live. Nahal Arthanaika. Listen live on digital, online, smart speaker or the BBC Sounds app. Good afternoon, it's four minutes past one. The Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A police, uh, sorry, a palace spokesperson said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral as is the Duke of Cambridge. Prime Minister Liz Truss said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. 
Labour leader Keir Starmer, along with the rest of the country, said, I am deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has posted on Twitter, All of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. Kath Burns is our health correspondent and Charles Ray is former royal correspondent at The Sun. Good afternoon to both of you. Thank you for joining us. Afternoon. Um, Hello. Charles, if I could start with you, what are your thoughts on hearing what the Queen's doctors have said? Well, I'm very concerned, obviously, like every everyone else, because it is a rare statement that the doctors have put out. And the fact that we are now hearing that the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duke of Cambridge are on their way to Balmoral. I know that, well, we know that the Duke of Cambridge is in uh, Windsor and I thought that the um, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall were in Burke Hall, which is not that far to travel. And he has, he's been up there for a while, so I'm not exactly sure if he's been back in London or whether he's still up there. But it is concerning. Uh, we saw the Queen looking pretty good when she met Liz Truss earlier this week. Uh, and obviously she had to cancel the virtual Privy Council meeting because she was, you know, mobility problems again. But the fact that the doctors are now issued this rare statement is a, is a great concern, to, I think, to everybody. Um, Kath, um, what has been Her Majesty's health like recently? Well, this is the thing. Over her lifetime, we've known Her Majesty to suffer, generally, sorry, not suffer, have excellent health, but she hasn't been so well recently. We've got quite used this year to seeing her dial back on some of her responsibilities. So this week, for example, you know, we saw Liz Truss had to go to Balmoral to see her because the Queen was not well enough to be in London. On September the 2nd, she missed the Balmoral Highland Games. Earlier this week, she had a Privy Council meeting, but she did it online instead of in person. And if you remember back even to the Jubilee weekend, she missed the Thanksgiving service then and the Epsom Derby, which is a keen racing fan. The Queen always does try to attend. I mean, if we go back a little bit further, in February, she tested positive for COVID. Now, at the time, it was said that she was suffering from mild cold-like symptoms. But a few months ago in April, she was on a video call to a hospital and she said, COVID does leave one very tired and exhausted, doesn't it? Doesn't it? So, you know, this is a 96-year-old woman. She has had remarkably good health through her lifetime, but... You know, this this is a difficult year for her. Um, similarly, as the question I asked Charles, um, Kath, as our health correspondent, what do you make of um, what the palace spokesperson has said, and of course, what Her Majesty's doctors have said? I mean, they've said very little, really. The Buckingham Palace statement, if we just go through it again, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended that she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. So we know very little there, but it is unusual for the palace to make this kind of statement. There obviously is a lot of concern. Um, Charles, um, can you give us a sense yeah. of, you know, as a former royal correspondent at The Sun, just tell us, she has extraordinary energy, hasn't she, Her Majesty? She has. Uh, I mean, she's a remarkable woman, a very stoic woman. And she, her, her mobility problems have caused her anger because she's not someone who suffers being, you know, suffering illness at all in, in any shape or form. But she's made the best of a bad job. So... Um, she will carry on, as she said, on a number of occasions uh, from the day that it was announced that she was Queen in 1952, that she would be carrying on right to the end. And she's kept and fulfilling that promise. And, it, it, you know, there's something that we've got to live with that eventually she won't be around much longer. But this, this is the mother of the nation. And this is a, a, a remarkable woman who served this country for 70 years, or in itself, a, a huge feat. I think she's the second longest living ever monarch in the world. That's an extraordinary achievement, without question, Charles. Uh, but she has been handing over duties to Prince Charles, hasn't Her Majesty? Well, yes. I mean, as, as you tend to get older, as, as she has done, she's done as much as she can, but there are things that she can hand over you know, uh, to the Prince of Wales. And as she has done with Princess Anne and the Duke of Cambridge, she's handed over some of the duties of the investitures. That's been going on for some time as she's, as she's been getting older. 
And there's a lot of things that the others have, have taken on, including um, um, uh, Prince Edward and Sophie Wessex, who've stepped up to the plate to, to step in uh, where, where possible to help her. So the family have been rallying round her, you know, quite a lot, and, and is getting more and more as she gets older. If you're just joining us here on BBC Radio 5 Live, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. I'm with Kath Burns, uh, BBC's health correspondent, but also with Charles Ray, former royal correspondent at The Sun. Charles, just give us a sense of her her energy levels and also as well i think people probably don't quite understand how busy the queen is in terms of her diary and you know and of course she's scaled back but let's get a sense of just how hard working she is charles well we only well we the public only see her when she is on an official duty like we saw her earlier this week with uh, the the appointment of the new prime minister that's where we see her but behind the scenes she's looking at the the red boxes the government boxes which she continues to do and there are also lots of correspondence that she has to deal with uh, uh, you know, with her uh, various secretaries who and they ask her, her opinion on a, a variety of matters. Um, obviously, uh, uh, official jobs are very much being scaled back, but she will be looking at those uh, invitations that she gets and be, you know, asking other members of the family that we've just been discussing to maybe take them on or look at them so that it, she's what we see is, is it's like an iceberg. We only see a small part of her, her work uh, in, in the public eye, but behind the scenes, there is a constant uh, work ethic that's going on. And she has an awful lot of um, various private events that she has to look at, including meeting various ambassadors from time to time from the countries as they're appointed and they come to this country. That's just one of the things that we don't normally see in public. Um. Just to give you a reminder, uh, Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral, as is the Duke of Cambridge. Another yeah. reminder, uh, a palace spokesperson has said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. And of course, as well as her duties, Charles, um, in terms of being the queen, she's of course a, a great grandmother as well. She has a, a huge and a vibrant family, doesn't she? She she has got a huge family. Yes, she has got a huge family, and quite a, a, a number of them actually are helping out, like the the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall, uh, Prince Edward and Sophie are helping out as, as well. Um, so the, the, uh, as she's uh, family has always been very, very important to her, but n never more so than since the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, she's found a great deal of solace with those members of, of the family. Um, Kath, um, Her Majesty has, of course, uh, as anyone of that age, uh, of most venerable age, has had some mobility issues, has she? Yeah. And when we think about mobility, I mean, if you boil it down to what it actually is, you know, the, the ability to be able to move around, you know, this is so essential and it could be, we've been speaking to some geriatricians and they're saying, you know, this this is something that could impact every part of your life. But the, the scale of problems, we, we, we don't know too much about the detail of them. But in terms of treatment, you know, there will be a multidisciplinary team around the Queen right now. If there's a medical issue that's causing these problems, they will be what's taking priority. If there's not a medical issue, then there's going to be physiotherapy to help mobility. So, you know, we've all got used recently to seeing the Queen walking with sticks. It, just this week with Liz Truss, we saw that she was using a stick. Um, so it, this, is, this is what it will be about right now, really. It's about making the Queen comfortable, seeing what they can do to try and get her moving and keep that independence and dignity for her. Uh, the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, my thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. The Labour leader, Keir Starmer, along with the rest, says, 
along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has posted on Twitter, all of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. Uh, Charles, as a former royal correspondent at The Sun, um, Kath mentioned about uh, Her Majesty's love of horse racing. Just tell us some more about uh, Her Majesty the Queen's passions. Well, horse racing is definitely a passion uh, for the Queen. We, we just got to look over the years at the various pictures that we've seen of her throwing her arms up and, you know, the, the facial expression of a, of a horse that she is backing in some form or another. Uh, it's going, you know, trying to encourage that horse to, to a win and, and everything else. Um, but she's she's got other passions. Obviously, the, the, the dogs. She's had a variety of dogs throughout the years, and they've they've been a great passion with her. They've always been with her and walking with her, and uh, you know everything else. Um, I'm going to have to go. I'm sorry. I can hear I your phone going off. Look. I can hear your phone. Going I, I'm, off. I'm really sorry. Thank you very okay. much. Thank sorry. you very much, Charles Ray, there, former Royal Correspondent at the Sun. Um, Kath. Um, just give us a sense of um, the challenges that Her Majesty faces. And it's, of course, the challenges that, that anyone in their 90s face. I mean, I think the problem right now is we don't know exactly what the Queen is under medical supervision for. We know that mobility has been an issue. And beyond that, we don't know any more details. But so if it's mobility, then, we, you know, as I've said, this is something that would, it could be anything from a limp to the ability not to be able to walk we but for any kind of person in their 90s this is going to be a key part of care you know the queen has been remarkably fit for somebody in their 90s um you know as as we've said she's very active she's been very busy um but generally when mobility is an issue the focus then will be on treating the underlying issue and then also you know, there will be things like rehabilitation and physiotherapy to try and keep that independence moving for anyone in their in the 90s. But the Queen has had a difficult year health wise. She tested positive for COVID back in February. Again, we were told it was mild, mild cold like symptoms at the time, but it has been a quieter year. We've seen her dial back on those responsibilities, hand some of them over to other royals. Um, over her lifetime, though, She's, had, she's generally had really good health. So we know about the back pains over the last few years, but it has been rare to hear about the Queen being in poor health. I've been looking back over the kind of incidents that we know about. If we go back to 1994, this is so typical of the Queen. She suffered a broken wrist because she was out riding a horse. You know, that's that active lifestyle that we know her for. In January 2003, she was successfully treated for damage to her right knee after she jarred her leg on a visit to Newmarket. Um, also in December 2003, she went keyhole surgery for a, a torn cartilage to her left knee. You know, these are all very minor kind of incidents. Back in 2006, she had a few weeks where she was laid off with sciatica. And it's thought that it was a recurrence of that which caused her um, in 2012 to have to pull out of an investiture ceremony um, because they thought standing up for a long time would make that condition worse. The only time we've known her to be sick really was back in 2013 when she had one night in hospital after gastroenteritis. So, you know, if you look over a year, over a 96 year lifespan, mm. that's remarkably healthy. Indeed. If you're just joining us here on BBC Radio 5 Live, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson said, Following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Now, the Prince Charles and uh, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral, as is the Duke of Cambridge. Prime Minister Liz Truss has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. Labour leader Keir Starm Starmer has said, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. 
As I said previously, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has posted on Twitter, all of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. Um, Kath, what are the royal protocols in terms of um, announcing uh, any issues with Her Majesty's health? It's very rare for us to get a statement like this. Um, you know, the, the palace does tell us when things have happened. Generally, we, we tend to hear when she has to miss out on something, you know, so she won't be attending this event because of this reason. Um, in this circumstance, there isn't an event that the que Queen is missing. This is just a blanket statement. And, you know, you've, you've read it out there, Nihal, and it's very sparse, the details. Following further evaluation, they are concerned. She's under medical supervision. There is so much that we don't know there. And that would be pretty typical, really, because they don't they don't overload. The palace doesn't like to overload people with these details. They like to keep these things private and, and until there's something to say. Um, so right now we're left in the position of just sort of waiting till we get more details. Kath, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Kath Burns, there, our health correspondent. Let's now speak to Caroline Aston, who is a royal commentator from Majesty magazine. Caroline, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What is your reaction to this news, Caroline? Sorrow, actually. Um, the Queen has had a gruelling year. Um, you remember how her activities had to be pruned back a little bit at the time of the Jubilee, so that what strength she had was conserved. She's also, of course, had a bit of a buffeting emotionally, mentally, over the last year or so with difficulties within her family. And of course, she's a very elderly lady. She's under medical supervision at the moment. And as your last speaker was saying, it is unusual to have this kind of notification. And I understand members of her family obviously want to be with her. Um, but that's all we know, that she's been advised to rest under medical supervision. And I'm sure our hearts go out to her because over the years, what a workhorse she's been, an absolute Trojan. And of course, as I say, she will be 97 next April, not a young lady anymore. Not, in, not at all. Um, a similar question that I asked Charles Ray, the former Royal Correspondent from The Sun, Caroline, is give us a sense of the extraordinary energy and strength of Her Majesty the Queen. Well, what can I say? Put onto the throne far too young in some ways with the premature death of her father, George VI, in 1952, she at that point ceased to be something she enjoyed being, a, a naval wife married to the handsome Prince of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Back they come, and she's never really stopped since then. She's seen our society through the most enormous changes, 70 years of it, seen the entire world change around her, and has had that great and precious gift of not speaking too much so that when she does speak, at times of national distress or worry, we stop and listen because she isn't always talking to us. I think you've seen a masterclass in monarchy and she's carried the baton that her father handed on to her, I think, with great pride and deserves our thoughts and our hopes at this time of decline for her. Indeed, Caroline. Uh, if you are just joining us here on Five Live at 23 minutes past one, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. As I said some moments ago, the Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral, as is the Duke of Cambridge. The Prime Minister has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, my thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. The Labour leader has said, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland has posted on Twitter, all of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all the royal family at this time. Um, Caroline, how unusual is it for the Queen's doctors to make a statement like this? We, we, we seem to have lost 
Caroline. Let's move on. This is what the Speaker of the House, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, said earlier in the House of Commons. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. I am going to take no more, just to, if there is anything else, we will update the House accordingly. And we, of course, will keep you updated here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Let's speak to Leila Nathu now, who is our political correspondent. Leila, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Hal. Um, what has the political reaction been so far, Leila? Well, there was a bit of a, uh, an indication that there was something going on during uh, the, top, the Commons Chamber debate about the energy uh, price guarantee. There was Liz Truss and Keir Starmer had made their statements and then it became apparent that something was going on. Nadim Zahawi, uh, who is uh, being appointed to Liz Truss's cabinet, came in and whispered something to Liz Truss. Uh, Angela Rayner, Labour's deputy leader, also got a briefing. Uh, and Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons, was also informed of something. So it was obvious that there was something going on. And then immediately uh, the statement from Buckingham Palace came out um, and Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, left the Commons. Quite a stark uh, a contrast to the cut and thrust of the debate that had been happening, a very sort of boisterous debate about the main policy issue of the day. It had been something that had been teed up all morning, teed up for days now, um, as Liz Truss's main major policy announcement. And then immediately the atmosphere changed uh, and Liz Truss left the chamber uh, and is, uh, I imagine, uh, awaiting further briefings on the situation. Now, you read out there the statements from uh, all the party leaders who, of course, have immediately uh, said that their thoughts are, are with the Queen and her family but I think just a reminder uh, as to basically politics ceasing to operate now uh, that the Queen's uh, health is in doubt. Um, she has of course Leila Her Majesty the Queen of course had important constitutional business to conduct this week hasn't she? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the last we, we saw of the Queen um, was appointing uh, Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister. She has now uh, seen the handover between Boris Johnson. They arrived, they went separately, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, to Balmoral uh, in an unusual departure from tradition. Normally, uh, the Queen appoints a new Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace, so it's just a short journey uh, from a newly uh, uh, from Westminster for any newly elected Prime Minister to, to get to Buckingham Palace. But unusually, this time, because of uh, the Queen's mobility, issues we were told she was going to stay in Balmoral where she has been uh, and both Liz Truss and Boris Johnson travelled up to see her. Boris Johnson of course tendering his resignation uh, at the end of the Tory party leadership contest and Liz Truss uh, going to uh, be appointed the new Prime Minister. Now um, this hand of, of power has just taken place days ago uh, and that's what that was the last appearance that we we saw off the Queen in those uh, photos uh, released from Balmoral, her shaking uh, the hands of Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister and very quickly attention turned here in Westminster to the business of government and uh, Liz Truss yesterday was in the swing of Prime Minister's questions, uh, her first uh, as Prime Minister at the at the dispatch box and today of course the big policy announcement so I think it was very striking to see the Commons Chamber interrupted in that way first by some some goings on uh, uh, indicating that there had been something uh, serious said to both party leaders uh, and then of course uh, with the departure of the party leaders from the, the chamber uh, and now their statement so everyone here uh, the commons seems remarkably quiet actually uh, for the second day back from well a few days back from mm. from the summer break it seems remarkably quiet clearly everyone here uh, who is passing me by um, is just awaiting news from the palace as we are. Um, Leila was there a palpable change in atmosphere then? as soon as uh, the information was fed to MPs in the House of Commons? Well, yes, I mean, the the first indications, as I said, was that the party leaders themselves got briefings in their ears. Something uh, was being passed uh, to uh, the Speaker of the House as well. Then both leaders left the, the Commons chamber uh, and then the Speaker, uh, as you, you played his statement there, he interrupted the Commons debate uh, to uh, make that statement uh, in reaction to the comments put out by Buckingham Palace. So yes, of course, there is a very sort of sombre atmosphere almost now, some concern uh, among MPs who are here. 
uh, not knowing the latest, but really uh, I imagine that uh, Liz Truss uh, is awaiting briefings um, herself and certainly the sort of oppositional uh, interaction between her and Sir Keir Starmer um, is, has been rapidly suspended. Uh, the, the chamber was in full swing in this debate, lots of interventions, lots of MPs from both sides wanting to make their their views heard on this huge policy issue affecting everybody and within minutes uh, the chamber sort of changed quite considerably and attention has moved elsewhere. Uh, Leila Nathu, thank you very much indeed. Um, a reminder of what the Speaker of the House, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, said earlier in the House of Commons. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. I'm going to take no more, just to, if there is anything else, we will update the House accordingly. Lindsay Hoyle there. So Lindsay Hoyle, of course, the Speaker. It is now half past one. Times for the headlines with Giuliano Cassidy. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Buckingham Palace says the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral after doctors became concerned for her health. Prince Charles has travelled to Balmoral. The Duchess of Cornwall has also travelled there and the Duke of Cambridge is on his way. Palace officials say the Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Liz Truss has announced plans to cap the price of energy for people in England, Scotland and Wales. The Prime Minister said the intervention would provide certainty for individuals. There'll be similar support for businesses for a six-month period. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has welcomed what she described as a very belated government action. She's calling on Liz Truss to increase funding for devolved administrations to allow them to support public sector services and workers. Meanwhile, if you want any more details, on the government's energy announcement about what help is available for businesses and households. You can find all you need to know on the BBC News website. One other bit of news, new figures show nearly one in eight people in England is now waiting for routine hospital treatment. The waiting list rose to more than 6.8 million people at the end of July, which is a new high. That's the news headlines. Jonathan McKeith has your sports. Graham Potter is set to be named as Chelsea manager in the next 24 hours after reaching a verbal agreement with the club. The Brighton boss spoke to Chelsea owner Todd Bowley on Wednesday night after Thomas Tuchel was sacked. Potter was at Brighton's training ground this morning but did not take the session. Uh, Chelsea hoped to have their new man in place before Saturday's Premier League game at Fulham. The former Swansea chairman Hugh Jenkins, who appointed Potter at the club four years ago, isn't surprised by Potter's popularity. In my view, there's no difference. Players are players. If the manager is up to the task, certainly as Graham is, they'll soon see that he's well capable of managing that club. There's no doubt in my mind. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag will take charge of his first European fixture at the club tonight when they welcome Real Sociedad to Old Trafford in the Europa League. United will be hoping to continue their recent return to form, having won their last four Premier League games. Marcus Rashford scored twice in Sunday's win over Arsenal. Ten Hag says the England man has been working hard. I see a happy Marcus Rashford and I see some, some faces in this game what we could improve and we worked really hard uh, the last two and a half months with him on, on different aspects and he likes it and he wants to transfer it to the pitch and that is what you see in this moment. Kick-off at Old Trafford is 8 o'clock. Elsewhere, Arsenal are away to FC Zurich from 5.45, while in the Europa Conference League, West Ham host FCSB from 8 o'clock. Hearts play Istanbul Basak Shahir. That's at 5.45. To day one of the opening test, heavy rain has meant there's been no play possible between England and South Africa. At the Oval for Five Live is Ellie Aldroyd. And we were supposed to be having an inspection at this moment. We had an early lunch at 12.30 in the umpires are due to inspect right now but uh, we have got more rain the covers have stayed firmly on since they went on at 11:30, which was the rescheduled start time so the only action that we've had so far on this first day is the toss england winning that toss and opting to bowl first but we haven't had the chance to have a ball bowled yet and it does look like there is some more dark cloud over to the right of us and potentially some more bad weather coming our way so it's a bit of a uh, bleak picture here at the oval currently 
Elliot for now. Thank you. Uh, let's get the latest from Wentworth. Uh, Rory McIlroy and Matthew Fitzpatrick are nearing the end of their opening rounds at the BMW PGA Championship and Ian Carter has been following the action. Yes, Jonathan, uh, Fitzpatrick has just tapped in for a birdie at the last, a three under par 69 for the US Open champion, a birdie two for Billy Horschel, the defending champion here. He's round in 68 and there should be a routine tap in for a birdie at the last for Rory McIlroy, which would also get him round in four under par 68. The leader in the clubhouse is Matthew Jordan, the Englishman round in a seven under 65, coming home in 31, but he has company. Tommy Fleetwood is on the 18th and he's also at seven under an encouraging start as well for Shane Lowry five under par with one hole to play just two shots off the lead updates from Ian in an hour but for now that's your latest from BBC Sport BBC Radio 5 Live I listen every day I trust the presenters there are lots of people calling us tonight Bowls to Stokes who hammers it for four the voice of the UK Nahal Arthanaika BBC Radio 5 Live and a very good afternoon to you. If you are just joining us, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. Her palace spokesperson said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral, as is the Duke of Cambridge. Uh, the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. Labour leader Keir Starmer, along with the rest of the country, has said, I am deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has tweeted, All of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. I'm now joined by the royal expert Richard Sumner. Good afternoon, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Um, what do we know so far, Richard? Well, the policy of the palace is always to be very tight-lipped about this sort of thing, and also to be a master of litotes and understatement. The details that we've been given are very sparse. Uh, um, now, th there's two sides to this sort of policy. Because the details are sparse, um, it's possible that we are overreacting and that this present um, problem, whatever it is, is a passing squall and will pass away. When somebody is 96, um, you will have health problems. Um, and <laughs> that of is course. obvious. Yes, but um, on the other hand, one has to say that if the Prince of Wales and the, the, the Duke of Cambridge are going to Balmoral, this is obviously something that the royal doctors are taking quite seriously. Um, I suspect that there is more than a mobility problem going on here. I've suspected for some time that there's more than a mobility problem going on. Um, I, I mean, for instance, why has the Queen never elected to use a wheelchair, as the Pope, present Pope now does? One, one feels possibly that there is more going on than, than, than just mere mobility. But to whatever it is, she will get the best of medical care. And, of course, we pray that she, she, she makes a recovery. I, 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 I hover on both sides of this, being too optimistic or too pessimistic. Because of the sparse details, we really can't tell. But at 96, obviously, anything like this has to be taken seriously. And, of course, um, Her Majesty Richard does not lead the life of um, a normal 96-year-old. She has many, many... Um, responsibilities. Does she not even, you know, she this week, of course? She still does all the red boxes every day, two to three hours a day. She's still been doing them just the same. I remember years ago, oddly enough, I heard Barbara Cartland talking about old age, and she said, well, she was old at the time, she said, when you reach old age, you either age from the neck up or the neck down. And from what I hear from sources I have, the Queen is still as sharp as a tack and also very interested in everything that's going on. It's, it's not anything from the neck up that's going wrong. It's just that she has a 96-year-old body and it's failing rather, which is only to be expected. 
Um, so that's oh. that's all we can know at the moment. Indeed, but I do right. feel there's possibly extra complications have arrived to add to the mobility problems. Um, otherwise, I don't think the Prince of Wales and, and the Cambridges will be going up to Balmoral. Uh, Richard, uh, could you stay with us for a few moments, please? Sure. Um, Royal expert Richard Sumner there. Um, let's speak to our Royal Cors Correspondent, Damien Grammaticus now, who is at Buckingham Palace. Uh, Damien, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, what do we know so far, Damien? So, well, all we know is this statement uh, from the palace uh, that the Queen, uh, that her doctors are looking after her uh, in Balmoral. Um, this came through as we were... Uh, here in London, the political leaders were all assembled in Parliament. Uh, the palace issued their statement and we know then that members of her family are, have been travelling up or are travelling up uh, to Scotland uh, to be with her. And that announcement was followed uh, by uh, statements we heard from the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who have put out a statement saying the whole country will be deeply concerned uh, by uh, the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, she added that her thoughts and the thoughts of people across the United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. The opposition leader, leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, very similar uh, within uh, minutes. He had re repeated those statements saying, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. And he added too that his thoughts uh, are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family. Uh, and he, along with everyone across the United Kingdom, were hoping for her recovery. Again, similar statements we've heard then from around the country so from Scotland from the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon saying all of us are feeling uh, profoundly concerned at the reports about Her Majesty's health her thoughts uh, and wishes are with the Queen and all the royal family again from uh, the uh, First Minister of Wales Mark Drakeford he uh, similarly uh, also extended his own uh, concern he said to hear the news from Buckingham Palace sent his best wishes to Her Majesty and her family uh, on behalf of the people of Wales from Northern Ireland Sir Geoffrey Donaldson uh, leader of the Democratic Unionist Party his thoughts and prayers and those uh, of the Democratic Unionist Party he said all with Her Majesty and other political parties too so Sir Ed Davey uh, leader of the Liberal Democrats again very similar the whole nation's thoughts and prayers with Her Majesty the Queen uh, and her family and we all hope and pray for a full recovery so uh, concern uh, best wishes uh, and uh, concern for her family too being expressed right across the country um, Johnny Diamond has reported for the BBC that uh, all of the Queen's children are either at or are traveling to Balmoral the Princess Royal is at Balmoral and the Duke of York and the Earl and Countess of Wessex are on their way to the Queen's Scottish home that's what sources are saying. Um, Damien, can you give us an overview of Her Majesty's health in recent times? Well, we know, uh, of course, that you know she uh, she's in her 90s. She has had uh, health, uh, like anyone, uh, some health uh, you know, concerns. Uh, she, the most recent of those. Uh, of course, there was concern about uh, COVID not that long ago. Uh, the uh, most recent one, of course, was the concern uh, described by Buckingham Palace and her doctors as uh, concerns about her mobility. Uh, that was the reason why, while she's been up in uh, Balmoral on her traditional summer break there, that we saw the events this week where rather than do what she'd done with all the other times during her reign when uh, she's uh, a new prime minister has taken office that where she has in buckingham palace invited the new prime minister to form a new government she did not do that this year she stayed in balmoral and instead the political leaders traveled up there from london so boris johnson traveled up to tender his resignation on tuesday shortly afterwards liz truss who just on monday had been 
confirmed as the winner of the uh, that uh, election to be the new leader of the Conservative Party. She, just after Boris Johnson tendered his resignation, she had an audience with the Queen in Balmoral, was invited by the Queen to form a new government, uh, and all of that was because of those uh, mobility issues, as they were described by her doctors. Uh, and. Uh, then the political leaders came back here but of course as you've been hearing today the, the concern now is that what the uh, doctors may be concerned about the statement from the palace um, seems to suggest that, that what the doctors are concerned about now is not the mobility issues but, but uh, something different. Damien, thank you. So our Royal Correspondent Damien Grammaticus who is at Buckingham Palace if you are just joining us here on Five Live, uh, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson has said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, are travelling to Balmoral, as is the Duke of Cambridge. Um, and as I said just some moments ago, the Princess Royal is at Balmoral also, alongside the Duke of York and the Earl and Countess of Wessex on their way to the Queen's Scottish home. That's what sources are saying. Johnny Diamond for the BBC has been saying that he understands that all Queen's children are either at or travelling to Balmoral. Um, we're with the royal expert Richard Sumner. Richard, thanks for staying with us. No problem. No. Um, it would, of course, be normal for the Queen's children to want to be by her side, wouldn't it? Yes. I think when you're talking about somebody who's 96, it really is a case of better safe than sorry. Um, anybody who is 96 who, who uh, contracts any serious illness, you will take it very seriously indeed. So, you know, let us hope we aren't overreacting at the news that the Cambridges and the Wessexes and the Prince of Wales are, are going up there. It's a better safe than sorry sort of policy, really. Let us hope it's something that will pass. But we aren't told what it is. But I do agree with Damien Grammaticus when he says it's not obviously not just mobility problems. There's obviously something else that is um, complicating matters, possibly atrial fibrillation or something, something that somebody who's 96 will certainly get. Um, but of course, with this tight-lipped policy of the palace, uh, we speculate, we don't know. They're not telling us, not yet. Um, what were your thoughts earlier on this week, Richard, when it was announced that uh, that the Queen, that the new Prime Minister would be travelling to Balmoral in a break? Well, with to tradition? be honest with you, I thought that was very serious because the Queen's dedication is absolutely amazing. And um, she would have strained every nerve to come down from Balmoral to the palace. She would only have not come if her doctors had sternly warned her not to. Now, if they sternly warned her not to, there must be a reason for that. And, and I have to say, I don't want to say, but I have to say, um, I was rather shocked when I saw the p pictures in the newspaper of her greeting Liz Truss, because I thought, though her smile was as radiant as ever, she was looking frail. She didn't look well. So we now wait to see what transpires. I mean, um, an incredible energy, um, way with people, Richard, mm. and also, of course, um, she has seen, well, you will know this, a number of prime ministers. How many? In Fifteen. Fifteen prime, Fifteen prime ministers. It's never been known in our, in our history before. And she sees them come and she sees them go. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I always think how very healthy it is that the prime minister, who gets to be rather arrogant on occasion, has to go every Tuesday evening to Buckingham Palace and bow in front of a small lady with blue eyes who's seen them come and seen them go. I think it puts things in perspective and it's a very healthy thing for a politician. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Uh, humility for our politicians is a very important thing. I think thing, so. Isn't? A little dose of a very friendly humility on a Tuesday. Of course, it's a great honour for them to be received. Winston Churchill used to love his long chats with the Queen, and we're told Harold Wilson did too. Things not so, not so bright with Edward Heath, and sometimes a little bit prickly with Mrs Thatcher. 
But of course, for the politician, it's, it's a unique occasion because just for once, he's talking to someone who has no ambitions at all because they're already at the top of the tree. They've got nothing more to gain. So any advice they give will be dispassionate and with a very long historical perspective. The Queen can say, oh, I remember 20 years ago you tried to do that, but it didn't work out because. And the second thing is that they know, absolutely know, it will not be leaked Whatever happens in the audience chamber with the Queen and the Prime Minister remains absolutely private, and there's never been any leak. The only leak I can recall, of course, was David Cameron, who let it slip that when the, the Scottish people voted to remain in the Union, he phoned the Queen, and the Queen, as he said, purred with pleasure. <laughs> and he had to apologise to the Queen for that, because that, had, that was a remark that uh, should not have been repeated. Can, but uh, we, we really have to wait now and see what happens. But I, 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 I just say, because they're, they're being tight-lipped, this is a 96-year-old lady. You know, all isn't over yet. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Royal expert Richard Sumner, thank you for joining us, Richard. A reminder of the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. The Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. Georgia Chambers joins us now, Royal Reporter for iNews. Georgia, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Um, can you tell us your reaction as the news broke from the Queen's doctors at Balmoral? Um, well, I think as many people have commented, um, we've been getting um, reports of the Queen's ill health for quite some time now. So in a way, I think for me and for other people, it's the news we've been kind of uh, dreading um, for a while um, obviously, we have to wait and see what happens um, a bit later. And we're obviously all hoping for the best and that she manages um, to pull through. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's going to be a very, um, it's already a very tense time in this country anyway, with uh, various things going on at the moment. And I think, um, yeah, this will just be um, another added thing. And people will be generally very concerned um, about the Queen's health at this time. Um, we've heard a lot, Georgia, have we not, about Her Majesty's mobility issues in the past, but this does seem to be a significant statement about her health. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's significant um, just because of the amount of conversation going on about it. I think um, just kind of the average the average listener can just, um, you know, you can see from the commentary, politicians are being tight-lipped about it. There were notes being passed around in Parliament this morning, I hear, um, and then even in the press, there are uh, more whispers going around than usual would be the case in reports of, you know, the Queen's ill health. So it does create that kind of added worry and concern. And then obviously with members of the royal family going um, to Balmoral to visit her, um, that adds another layer of, of, of concern. Um, so, yeah, we, we really just have to hope for the best and just wait to see what happens, really. Um, Georgia, we understand that all the Queen's children are either at or travelling to Balmoral. We heard recently that Princess Royal is there, the Duke of York, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, uh, alongside, of course, uh, Prince Charles uh, and uh, Camilla. Um, are we aware of where Prince Harry currently is? Because he is in Europe, isn't he? Yeah, he has been. He's been with um, Meghan. Obviously, they, um, they're in the UK very recently as well. Um, so we're not sure of his whereabouts at the moment. I haven't um, heard many reports, but it wouldn't surprise me given the gravity of the situation or if it could turn into a, a very serious situation. It wouldn't surprise me um, if, if Harry went to went to visit his grandmother, who I believe is still very important to him. Um, so, um, Can you also give us a sense, Georgia, of how important Balmoral is for Her Majesty the Queen? Um, I mean, well, so it's definitely an important location for her, and I think it is... For her, it is a place of kind of relaxation and rest as well. And it's a place where she's still able to be in that comfortable state and um, carry out royal duties that she's able to. Um, so I think I think there's comfort in the fact that she's kind of away from um, the busyness um, of Buckingham Palace and um, she's resting up there, which I think probably provides some comfort. Um, but yeah, I think that's the, the main significant for her. It's really a place of just... Um, kind of restoration so with that in mind we'll just we'll just continue hoping for the best for her indeed um we're here on thursday her doctors have asked her to rest but of course just two days ago uh, she asked the 15th prime minister of her reign to form a new government what does that tell us about her dedication to public service georgia 
Mm. I think, you know, all of us, most of us now would have grown up with the Queen as our only monarch. And I think one thing that has been a constant, um, and this is something that was reflected upon during the Queen's Jubilee earlier this year, is she has been a incredibly dedicated and hardworking monarch. And I, I've always said, regardless what you think about the royal family as a collective, I don't think anyone can deny um, the Queen's dedication to this country and uh, the work she's put in and continues to put in. Um, so I think that's really something uh, that we should we should celebrate, um, regardless of you know differing opinions about the monarchy. Um, also, of course, um, mention how many people here in the UK are deeply concerned. But give us a sense of the amount of interest globally in Her Majesty the Queen and her family, Georgia. She's got huge interest globally. Um, the royal family um, have massive, uh, gained massive interest in the US, for example. Um, and they'll definitely, I think, globally, this will kind of uh, stretch ac across the world. Um, people, you know, recognise she's like the second longest reigning monarch in history, I believe. Um, so um, I think that alone and just the incredible amount of work she's put in, she is a real figurehead of what a queen and what a leader should be. Um, so I think this news um, and this concern will not go unnoticed by people around the world. Not at all. Um, but she has, of course, of late, quite understandably, uh, been passing on some of her duties, hasn't she, Georgia, in recent mm -hmm. years and months? So, uh, yes, yeah, she has. Sorry. Yes, she has been passing on a lot of her responsibilities. Um, and it's been necessary, to be honest, in, a, in order for her to kind of um, maintain her her health state and I think she's at a place now where she's really had to balance um, her health and the need for rest um, with that kind of incessant dedication um, uh, to her work and she's definitely not one one to give up um, so sure I'll expect her to to keep going if, if hopefully she does um, recover from this. Has it been a gradual reduction in her duties or is it something that has that has come quite quickly, the pace of reducing her activities and her duties? Um, I think it's partly been a gradual reduction. Um, I think definitely in the past year or so, um, her royal duties have definitely diminished a lot quicker, um, just because, again, we're hearing lots of reports all the time um, about her ill health and mobility issues and things like that. Um, but she's still, like, even, again, we had the Queen's Jubilee um, back in June and she was still even though she was um, not in great health back then even, she was still very present just in spirit and in person for the celebrations. Um, so yeah, I think that's a, just like a key element of her reign really. She's always, uh, her presence always felt, I think, in spirit. And this has been, of course, um, an extraordinary year for Her Majesty, not least the Jubilee, uh, the Commonwealth Games. Uh, but of course, earlier on this year, Georgia, she also had COVID, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She had COVID. And again, there was a, a lot of concern um, back then around around her health uh, back then because just for the average person for the average young person especially and when we didn't know what was going on with COVID um, it was really um, kind of hit and miss as to whether how badly like COVID would affect you um, and the implications of that so I think the fact um, that she made it through that again is just another um, another kind of demonstration of how strong and how resilient a monarch she is. And, and of course as you pointed out Georgia uh, despite perhaps people's opinions of other members in the royal family, the Queen is is almost universally lauded. What do you put that down to? Um, honestly, I think she's, firstly, I think she definitely um, kind of embodies that, um, that kind of classic royal motto of, you know, you never complain, never explain, that kind of thing. She's always just got on with her work. Um, she's never really uh, explicitly commented on kind of political issues or things like that or given her view. She's always been there just to get the job done. And I think um, that is something that a lot of hardworking Brits in this country really respect. And I think that's slightly different from other members of the royal family, some of which have been kind of played in scandal or they've um, kind of got this, um, they've had various views about political issues. Um, and I think I think the Queen is just separate from that um, because she just, she just really gets on with it and she just does... Um, she knows, she knows what the requirements of her job are um, and she has fulfilled those um, for decades now. Um, so I think that's why why we revere her so much. Um, and of course, um, in April of last year, she lost her life partner, the love of her life, um, her husband, Prince Philip. Um, what do we know or what can we know about uh, the effect that would have had on Her Majesty? Um, 
I don't think we'll ever we'll ever know the the full um, kind of emotional effects that that had on her. I'm sure it was it was heartbreaking. Of course. Um, but even then, and you know, we we saw the Queen pretty much after that just get on with her. You know, she didn't spend time um, kind of mourning like excessively. She, although obviously the sadness was, was still there, she very much kind of got on with her with her duties. But I imagine it would have been incredibly hard for her to have someone who was by her side um, for all those years to no longer be there and to not have that kind of system of support um, would have massively impacted her. Um, and because she is the queen and she she doesn't always explain, um, she doesn't explain fully how she's feeling, I think that's something we'll, we'll never really appreciate. I don't think how much that affected her at the time. Indeed. Um, Georgia Chambers, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Royal reporter for iNews. Now, we're just hearing that Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, will travel to Balmoral today. Uh, just a reminder, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson said following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Voice of the UK. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. With the Five Live News, I'm Sophie Yardley. Buckingham Palace says the Queen's doctors are concerned for her health. They've recommended that the 96-year-old remains under medical supervision. In a statement released about an hour ago, the police said the Queen, the palace, sorry, said the Queen was comfortable at Balmoral. Common Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle interrupted the energy debate. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. The BBC understands that all the Queen's children are either at or travelling to the Balmoral estate. Princes William and Harry are also believed to be on their way. Charles Ray is former royal correspondent at The Sun. It is concerning. Uh, we saw the Queen looking pretty good when she met Liz Truss earlier this week. Uh, and obviously she had to cancel the virtual Privy Council meeting because she was, you know, mobility problems again. But the fact that the doctors are now issued this rare statement is a great concern, to, I think, to everybody. Liz Truss says the whole country would be deeply concerned by the news and her thoughts were with the Queen and her family. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, joined the Prime Minister in wishing the Queen well, saying he joined everyone across the UK in hoping for her recovery. The First Ministers of Scotland and Wales have also sent their thoughts. In other news, Liz Truss has announced plans to help households and businesses deal with rising energy bills. The Energy Price Guarantee Scheme will cap the average annual price of energy for people in England, Scotland and Wales at £2,500 for the next two years. The Prime Minister says it would provide certainty for individuals. Here's Coletta Smith. From next month, the price cap had been due to go up to £3,500 a year for a typical bill. But the new Prime Minister says she'll limit the increase to 2500 for the next two years. The government will fill in the gap and make up the difference between this new level and the price which suppliers would have charged. Once you include the £400 discount which will be applied directly to everyone's energy bill over the next six months, the rate will be similar to the current price cap. The waiting list for routine hospital treatment in England has continued to grow. NHS figures show more than 6.8 million people were on the list at the end of July, a new record. With your sport, I'm Jonathan McKeith. Chelsea will pay Brighton in excess of £21 million in compensation for their manager, Graham Potter. He's verbally agreed to take over at Stamford Bridge following the sacking of Thomas Tuchel. Chelsea want to have their new coach in place before Saturday's Premier League trip to West London rivals Fulham. Lewis Hamilton will start from the back of the grid for Sunday's Italian Grand Prix after the seven-time world champion was given an engine penalty. The Mercedes driver is to take on his fourth power unit of the campaign in Monaco. 
Monza, one more than is allowed under Formula One rules. It's after damage to the engine following Hamilton's crash at the Belgium Grand Prix two weeks ago. And England and Wales have been drawn in the same pool for next year's Hockey World Cup. They are joined by hosts India and Spain. BBC Radio 5 Live. I listen every day. I trust the presenters. There are lots of people calling us tonight. Bowls to Stokes who hammers it for four. The voice of the UK. Nahal Arthanaika. BBC Radio 5 Live. Good afternoon. It's three minutes past two. If you're just joining us this afternoon, Buckingham Palace say the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral, with doctors concerned for her health. She's said to be comfortable and resting. MPs were told earlier in the House of Commons by the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. I'm going to take no more, just to, if there is anything else, we will update the House accordingly. The BBC's Royal Correspondent, Johnny Diamond, has joined me. Johnny, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Hi, Neha. Um, what more have the palace said, Johnny? It's very limited. Um, uh, it always is when it comes to the health of senior members of the royal family. But the fact that this statement has been made at all and the nature of the statement is an indication of the seriousness of the situation. If the Queen had a cold or was some way likely incapacitated, they wouldn't have said anything. And the fact that they have said that her doctors are concerned for her health is another indication that this has a degree of seriousness which we have not seen before. And the final point to note is the fact that all of the Queen's children, the BBC understands, are now either at Balmoral or making their way towards Balmoral. That's the, the castle in Aberdeenshire in Scotland where the Queen has been spending the summer. The Prince of Wales is there, the Duke of York, the Earl of Wessex and the Princess Royal, Princess Anne are making their way there now. That's all four of her children and second in line to the throne, the Duke of Cambridge, that's Prince William, is also making his way to Balmoral. Uh, you know, we're not going to spend hours speculating about the Indeed. condition of her health. We don't know what it is. There's not much point to be gained by that. But it is very clear that this is an unusual situation. And those three things, the fact of the statement, the, the nature of the statement, the fact that her children are all there or making their way there is an indication of the seriousness of it. Alongside, of course, that statement that you played from the Speaker of the House, the fact the Archbishop of Canterbury has sent his best wishes as well. The, the mood is deeply sombre amongst the different bits of the British state as they think of how the Queen is and as they send their best wishes to her and her family. Um, as you rightly said, we will not be engaging in speculation, uh, Johnny, um, but uh, is there precedent for, because the Queen of course is 96 years old and has had health issues, as anyone uh, in their 90s would have, um, is there precedent for her family, her children gathering in this way? Not really, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that, that, is, that is to me perhaps the most striking aspect of this situation and, and the reason why I think so many people listening and hearing the news will take it as seriously as they should do. This gathering of the family is an indication that this is a serious situation. Let's, let's go back a couple of days. On Tuesday, the Queen saw the incoming and outgoing Prime Ministers, um, Boris Johnson on his way out, Liz Truss on her way in. They flew up to Balmoral. Um, the Queen had wanted, we are told, to go down to Buckingham Palace where that ceremony is normally held, but um, instead uh, her staff and her doctors said, no, I want you to stay in Balmoral. But she was smiling, she was uh, on her feet, if supported by a stick. Um, she seemed frail, as any 96-year-old would do, but Indeed. she seemed fine. On Wednesday, a scheduled meeting of what's called the Privy Council, which again, one of those odd organs of state, but in this case, it, it was effectively the Cabinet, the new Cabinet, where the new Cabinet gets sworn in and the Prime Minister gets sworn in. There was a, going to be a video conference with the Queen as Head of State. She would have remained in Balmoral, they would have been in London, video conference. That got cancelled 
cancelled um, with little explanation other than that the Queen had had a rather full day on Tuesday. And at the time, I thought, well, she must be very tired. Um, and fair enough, again, 96 years old. And we know that she has mobility issues. And then this morning, this statement, this pretty extraordinary statement, uh, the fact that that has come so quickly amidst a swirl of rumours um, is a sign that things have clearly dipped for the Queen. We do not know the situation, but coupled with the fact that her children are on their way, the timetable suggests that she has clearly um, gone downhill rather rapidly and that her medical staff, her doctors, are clearly concerned. Um, as I asked a previous guest, Johnny, uh, and you've just pointed out, just on Tuesday she saw the outgoing Prime Minister yeah. amid the new Prime Minister. Um, this, of course, points very directly to her sense of duty. Yeah, there was no dodging this for her, as there has been no dodging things for so long, up until, it has to be said, this past six months. And I don't use the word dodging disrespectfully. The fact that she has um, yielded to the facts of old age. She missed the most important date in her calendar last November. That's Remembrance Sunday. She missed the state opening of Parliament a few months ago this year. She missed the what's called the Maundy service, perhaps the most important religious service that she undertakes. So those three things, military, state and religious, all of those she asked Prince Charles to deputise for her. And it became clear with that Platinum Jubilee celebration, and what a super celebration it was, it became clear that the Queen was withdrawing from the very visible role that she has played for the last seven decades. Um, and now we have this. Um, she wanted to, to make sure that the what's called kissing hands, that's the, the saying goodbye to the old Prime Minister and saying hello to the new Prime Minister. She wanted to make sure that happened with her as the head of state. It could have been deputised to Prince Charles, but that was done at Balmoral and that was a significant shift. And now we have this. As, as I say, the fact of the statement, the fact of the children making their way there, the fact of the, the various statements of good wishes from the various different bits of, of government and the religious hierarchy here in, here in the UK does indicate a, a degree of seriousness, which we certainly haven't seen before. And I think that many people will be concerned about. Johnny, what specific royal duties has the, Her Majesty the Queen been able to carry out oh, in the last six months? I mean, she carries, she carries out an enormous number. It's just most of them happen below the surface uh, when you don't, you know, we don't see them. You know, we, we see the, might see the state opening of Parliament or we might see her at Remembrance Day. But day to day, there are literally hours of state duties. I mean, a lot of it is reading state papers. Um, I mean, these great red boxes turn up at Buckingham Palace with all the state papers. She spent seven decades reading these things. She does it on her holidays. She did it when she was on royal tours. She has faithfully been doing those as well. She receives incoming ambassadors from all the countries that we have diplomatic relations. When, the, when there's a new ambassador, she greets them and effectively seals the beginning of their time. Um, and and a myriad of other smaller duties like this thing called the Privy Council, um, which is a ceremonial part of state, but an important one, part of what we are and what she has done for so long. So a lot has gone on under the surface, but what has been noticeable because of the mobility problems that she has suffered and, and because I think of a degree of exhaustion that's gone along with that has been the withdrawal from the very high profile events, especially anything that necessitated her making a sort of a long sort of movement in public, a walk anywhere, because she is effectively um, not immobile, but she has mobility problems that it would mean she would need a wheelchair. And I think that has been resisted over the last, what, year or so. Um, lastly, because I do understand you're very much in demand at the moment, Johnny, so thank you very much indeed for spending uh, time with us. Um, can you give us a sense if there's any precedent for her doctors issuing a statement using anything like this, the wording that we've heard today? 
No, I can't think of anything. Look, I mean, you know, it's been a long, long rain. Yeah, it really has. And um, <laughs> there have been several uh, royal correspondents before me. Um, she has actually had remarkably good health and spent very little time in hospital. Um, when she has gone into hospital, of course, there will have been a, a, a bulletin issued, a statement about that, because that's deemed serious enough um, that, that the palace feels it has to speak about that. But really, I, I can't remember a time like this. Um, as I've said, that the fact of the statement itself is quite something. The nature of the statement, that, that phrase about her being comfortable. You know, we've all had relatives in ill health. And as I say, the, the fact that her children um, are either at Balmoral or on their way is a sign of the seriousness and the concern with which many people will hold this. Johnny, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. The BBC's Royal Correspondent, Johnny Diamond, there. Now, if you were just joining us at 13 minutes past two on BBC Radio 5 Live, uh, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. A palace spokesperson has said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. Uh, the Duchess of Cambridge has remained in Windsor to be with her children. It has been their first day of school today. We are hearing that Prince Harry and his wife Meghan will travel to Balmoral today and we understand all of the Queen's children are either at Balmoral or on their way to see her. So let's now speak to the former BBC Royal Correspondent, Peter Hunt. Peter, thank you for joining us this afternoon. No problem. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon to you. The Queen's health, uh, Peter, has been of increased focus, has it not, in recent years? Yes, I mean, pretty much for the last 11 months. I mean, if we think back just those 11 months, it was around mid-October that we last saw her as we were once used to seeing her, which was a sort of active monarch. She was at a business reception. She was captured smiling broadly, looking up at business people, chatting to them in a reception at Windsor Castle. And that, if we think back to those periods, that's when we used to see the, the Queen and we got used to seeing her. But of course, she is now 96. And since that moment in October, uh, she has got progressively frailer. Um, she had a brief period in hospital that wasn't announced in advance. And no no public statement has ever been given as to what is wrong with her or why she went to hospital at that point. But what is clear is that she's frail and what is clear is that she has had increasing mobility problems. And it was those mobility problems that prevented her from travelling from Scotland to London and instead forced her 14th and 15th Prime Ministers, Boris Johnson and Liz Trust, to each make that 1,000 mile round trip from London to Balmoral in order that Boris could resign and Liz Trust could be appointed as Prime Minister. So that was all about mobility. But then what isn't clear is why she then couldn't do a sort of virtual meeting, which was in the diary for yesterday. And that's really when I think the first alarm bells sounded, uh, when it was made clear that she couldn't do this Privy Council meeting last night because doctors had advised her to rest. And now today, as you've just been announcing, we have had this pretty unusual, highly unusual uh, statement uh, about her health, because ordinarily, the fact that they've issued the statement at all, she is on holiday, they could have quite happily not told us this, but there is clearly, as they say, the doctors are concerned for her health. And the other key fact is the gathering of her immediate family members at Balmoral, which is happening as we speak. Um, you have, of course, Peter, uh, followed the royal family for many years. Uh, what do you take from the tone of the statement from Buckingham Palace? And the fact that her children, some of her grandchildren, are heading towards Balmoral. And of course, you wouldn't wish, nor would we, to engage in speculation. But I'd just like to get a sense of your feelings now. Well, I think the, the tone of the statement that you've read out is very serious. And it shows that there is serious concerns within the British establishment about the, the well-being of the Queen. It is a very significant fact that her immediate family members... Uh, Charles and Camilla, William, the Princess Royal, Andrew, Edward and Sophie, and also it's reported Harry and Meghan are all 
either at Balmoral or traveling there. That is another very significant fact. They wouldn't do that ordinarily. Uh, you know, if you take William, for example, he has just started to settle his kids in at school, as lots of parents have listening to you at the beginning of a new term, but he's, he's left that now with his wife and is, is traveling up to Scotland. Harry and Meghan are briefly back in the UK for something else, for a charity event this evening, which one suspects may well be postponed, if not cancelled. And so they're traveling to Scotland. So that is a very significant indication of the concern within the family about the well-being of the Queen. And then not only the seriousness of the statement from the palace, but also the seriousness of the words that have been used by various public figures. We've had the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, the Queen's 15th Prime Minister, talking about the whole country uh, being deeply concerned. And we've had the Archbishop of Canterbury offering his prayers and saying they are with the Queen. Can you give us a sense, Peter, of what the process is of informing the family firstly and the public and, and give us some insight into that? Well, fundamentally, when we're talking about the Queen's health, uh, they will always inform the family first. And in their ideal world, they give very, very, very limited information about the Queen's health to the public. They believe that is completely private information. And it's a very tricky area for them because we're, we're talking about a woman who is the head of state and who has a significant role within the British constitution and within British life. And so they constantly walk this tightrope of um, what they can say and what they can't say. And I, I noticed that during the time I was the BBC's Royal Correspondent, a reduction, a deliberate reduction in the information they would put in the public domain. And I trace that back to a time when the Queen went in that hospital that everyone is familiar with, the Edward VII Hospital. Uh, and she was in, I don't even think they said what it was, but it was something reasonably minor. But I remember she came out and she looked and there was just this bank of photographers. And I heard afterwards that she was utterly appalled. <laughs> Someone of her age could go into a hospital and then be greeted by the, the sort of, you know, international media presence who were fascinated to see what was wrong with her. And I think ever since that point, they were pretty determined to limit even more what information they put into the public domain. And that has been very striking uh, since this recent bout of ill health that we can trace back to October last year when they did not even tell people in advance or at the time that the Queen was in hospital overnight. They only had to confirm that when it was leaked uh, to the Sun newspaper. Um, worth reflecting, uh, Peter, on what a momentous year this has been for the Queen, the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Um, what about her level of involvement in those celebrations? Well, that was another indication of, I mean, on one level, it's pretty extraordinary, isn't it, that we have a 96-year-old, we can all think of relatives of ours, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, who at 96 may not have been as uh, agile as she was. I mean, she can clearly still stand. She was pictured standing with a walking stick when she met Liz Truss and Boris Johnson just Tuesday, just two days ago. But it, her ability to stand and ability to move around has clearly uh, reduced in recent months. And so that did have an impact on her Jubilee celebrations. And so she wasn't involved as much as she would have liked to. I mean, the first day she stood at did two balcony appearances. Uh, it was said afterwards that she was very tired. And so she had to miss the church service. And she would have found that very hard. I mean, her faith is, is pivotal to the Queen. So missing that church service would have bothered her. She missed other events as well. But crucially, she did make that final balcony appearance. And that was very vital in terms of the imagery of the British monarchy, because on that balcony was Charles, William, George, Camilla, Kate, Charlotte and Louis. And that image was all about saying that the future of the monarchy was secure as far as the Queen was concerned in her son and subsequent heirs, William and George. Peter, thank you. Former BBC Royal Correspondent Peter Hunt there. Cardinal Nichols, the Archbishop of Westminster and head of the Catholic Church in England and Wales, has said, I'm concerned to hear the news about Her Majesty the Queen's health. I offer my prayers for her and her family. Buckingham Palace say the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral, with doctors concerned for her health. She is said to be comfortable and resting. Family members are gathering to be with her at Balmoral. Our royal correspondent, Helena Wilkinson, is at Windsor for us. Helena, good afternoon. Good afternoon. The Queen hasn't been um, at Windsor for some time, has she, Helena, for her, due to her health? Well, she, this is where she uh, made her home, primary home, if you like, as opposed to in London. Windsor Castle is one of her favoured uh, royal residences, but she traditionally uh, would uh, travel and does every year to Balmoral for the summer months. 
uh, and she every year tends to return in October. Um, but we know that she has had these mobility issues that the palace have told us about since around September, October time that uh, made her um, have to step back from certain duties and some of those duties passed on to her son, Prince Charles, uh, and also Prince William. Uh, what's, what's interesting, I think, about the statement that has been released by Buckingham Palace, and as, as Peter said there, they don't uh, comment on uh, the Queen's health ordinarily. They very much regard health matters to do with the 96-year-old monarch as private matters, but they have issued this statement. I think that very much underlines the seriousness of the situation the concern about the Queen's health. Uh, but, but again, what's interesting is that there hasn't been any mention at all of those mobility issues. Uh, so what we don't know is uh, whether there is some underlying um, issue, health problem that the Queen is suffering from. It's worth pointing out uh, from the statement that was released at around 20 past 12 uh, this afternoon from Buckingham Palace is that it did go on to say that the Queen is comfortable and she is at Balmoral um, but again we are seeing this afternoon and very quickly after that statement was released uh, members of her immediate family were informed and we are now seeing uh, members of the royal family the Queen's family either already at Balmoral uh, Prince Charles uh, or they are travelling to Balmoral. We know that Prince William is on his way and uh, of course we saw uh, Prince William and um, his wife, the Duchess of Cambridge, their children started a new school not far from Windsor uh, for their first full day this morning. We saw those pictures released today but Prince William now uh, one of the members of the royal family on their way to Balmoral to visit Her Majesty, who is 96 years old. Uh, doctors say they are concerned about her health and that she will remain under medical supervision. Um, Helena, um, according to the Royal Commentator and author Robert Hardman, it is said that the Palace does not issue bulletins on the Queen's health unless it's significant. Would you concur with that? I think that's absolutely... Uh, yeah, I think that is absolutely right. Um, again, as I say, they uh, would not give a, a running commentary about the Queen's health. We know that there was a visit to the hospital um, late last year, um, but they don't tend to comment because they, again, see those issues, the health matters to do with the Queen as very private matters. So I think the fact that, that they have released this statement, I think that very much underlines that there is a huge amount of concern about the Queen. Added to that, the fact that we are seeing members of the royal family either already at Balmoral. We know that uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who are in the UK, they were meant to be at a charity event in London later on today. That, that plan has now changed and they are also travelling to Balmoral. All of them on their way to see the Queen, as I say, some of them there already. So I think the statement and, and the fact that doctors in that statement, doctors are concerned about the Queen. She is comfortable, we are told, but she is under medical supervision. So I think there is a, a huge amount of concern if you add all of those elements up together. Helena, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Our Royal Correspondent, Helena Wilkinson, who is at Windsor. The Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. She is said to be comfortable and resting. Her family members, as you've heard, are gathering to be with her at Balmoral. I spoke earlier to Leila Nathu, our political correspondent, about the political response to the news. Well, there was a bit of a, uh, an indication that there was something going on during uh, the, top, the Commons Chamber debate about the energy uh, price guarantee. There was Liz Truss and Keir Starmer had made their statements and then it became apparent that something was going on. Nadim Zahawi, uh, who is uh, being appointed to Liz Truss's cabinet, came in and whispered something to Liz Truss. Uh, Angela Rayner, Labour's deputy leader, also got a briefing uh, and Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons, was also informed of something. So it was obvious that there was something going on and then immediately uh, the statement from Buckingham Palace came out um, and Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, left the Commons. Quite a stark uh, 
uh, contrast to the cut and thrust of the debate that had been happening, a very sort of boisterous debate about the main policy issue of the day. It had been something that had been teed up all morning, teed up for days now um, as Liz Truss's main major policy announcement. And then immediately the atmosphere changed uh, and Liz Truss left the chamber uh, and is, uh, I imagine, uh, awaiting further briefings on the situation. Now, you read out there the statements from uh, all the party leaders who, of course, have immediately uh, said that their thoughts are, are with the Queen and her family. But I think just a reminder uh, as to basically politics ceasing to operate now uh, that the Queen's uh, health is in doubt. Um, she has, of course, Leila, Her Majesty the Queen, of course, had important constitutional business to conduct this week, hasn't she? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the last week we saw of the Queen um, was appointing uh, Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister. She has now uh, seen the handover between Boris Johnson. They arrived, They went separately, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, to Balmoral uh, in an unusual departure from tradition. Normally, uh, the Queen appoints a new Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace, so it's just a short journey uh, from a newly uh, uh, from Westminster for any newly elected Prime Minister to, to get to Buckingham Palace. But unusually, this time, because of uh, the Queen's mobility, issues we were told she was going to stay in Balmoral where she has been uh, and both Liz Truss and Boris Johnson travelled up to see her. Boris Johnson of course tendering his resignation uh, at the end of the Tory party leadership contest and Liz Truss uh, going to uh, be appointed the new Prime Minister. Now, um, this handover of power has just taken place days ago, uh, and that's what that was the last appearance that we, we saw of the Queen in those uh, photos uh, released from Balmoral, her shaking uh, the hand of Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister. And very quickly, attention turns here in Westminster to the business of government. And uh, Liz Truss yesterday was in the swing of Prime Minister's questions, uh, her first uh, as Prime Minister. At, at at the dispatch box and today of course the big policy announcement so I think it was very striking to see the Commons Chamber interrupted in that way first by some some goings-on uh, uh, indicating that there had been something uh, serious said to both party leaders uh, and then of course uh, with the departure of the party leaders from the, the chamber uh, and now their statement so everyone here uh, the commons seems remarkably quiet actually uh, for the second day back from well a few days back from mm -hmm. from the summer break it seems remarkably quiet clearly everyone here uh, who is passing me by um, is just awaiting news from the palace as we are um, Leila was there a palpable change in atmosphere then as soon as uh, the information was fed to MPs in the House of Commons? Well, yes, I mean, the the first indications, as I said, was that the party leaders themselves got briefings in their ears. Something uh, was being passed uh, to uh, the Speaker of the House as well. Then both leaders left the, the Commons chamber uh, and then the Speaker, uh, as you, you played his statement there, he interrupted the Commons debate uh, to uh, make that statement uh, in reaction to the comments put out by Buckingham Palace. So yes, of course, there is a very sort of sombre atmosphere almost now, some concern uh, among MPs who are here uh, uh, not knowing the latest, but really, uh, I imagine that uh, Liz Truss uh, is awaiting briefings um, herself, and certainly the sort of oppositional uh, interaction between her and Sir Keir Starmer um, is, has been rapidly suspended. Uh, the, the chamber was in full swing in this debate, lots of interventions, lots of MPs from both sides wanting to make their their views heard on this huge policy issue affecting everybody and within minutes uh, the chamber sort of changed quite considerably and attention has moved elsewhere. That was Leila Nathu, our political correspondent, speaking to me earlier. It's now 31 minutes past two. It's time for the news headlines with Sophie Yardley. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Buckingham Palace says the Queen's doctors are concerned for her health and have recommended that she remains under medical supervision. In a statement, the palace said the Queen was comfortable at Balmoral. The BBC understands that all the Queen's children are either at or travelling to the Balmoral estate. Prince William and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are believed to be on their way. Liz Truss says the country will be deeply concerned and her thoughts are with the Queen and her family. The Labour leader, Sir Keir 
Starmer says everyone across the UK is hoping for her recovery. Earlier, the Prime Minister announced her plans to deal with rising energy bills. She launched the Energy Price Guarantee Scheme, which will cap the average annual price of energy for people in England, Scotland and Wales at £2,500 for the next two years. There are full details of the plans on the BBC News website. Now, here's Jonathan McKeith with the Five Life Sport. Sophie, thank you. Chelsea will pay Brighton compensation in excess of £21 million for their manager, Graham Potter, who has reached a verbal agreement to join the London club. Potter is expected to formally complete the move to Stamford Bridge in the next 24 hours after Thomas Tuchel was sacked after 100 games in charge. On the pitch, meanwhile, the European Knights continue as West Ham prepare to host Romanian side FCSB from 8 o'clock. Domestically, the Hammers have struggled this season and sit 18th in the Premier League with just one win in six. However, manager David Moyes recognises they'll be favourites to get out of their Conference League group. I think the bigger thing is it's always easy at this time in the competitions. We thought that last year in the Europa League until we a lot of the teams get knocked down from the Champions League and then you find out what comes in. So we'll have the same situation when the teams are dropping down from the Europa League. So it's difficult at this stage, but I think it's only when those teams start to drop down do you see it. Elsewhere, Hearts get their campaign underway against Istanbul Bashik Shahir. That's from 5.45. Uh, the Europa League also gets underway later this afternoon with Arsenal and Manchester United both in action. Arsenal are away to FC Zurich. That's from 5.45. While Eric Ten Hag's side welcome Real Sociedad to Old Trafford from 8 o'clock. Chelsea women's manager Emma Hayes says she hopes to see a sold-out Stamford Bridge this Sunday with the return of the Women's Super League. Defending champions host London rivals West Ham in what is set to be the biggest season yet following England's success at Euro 2022. Uh, speaking ahead of the weekend's action, Hayes says the women's game still has a way to go. We've still only in the last 12 months been able to schedule fixtures with any consistency. Plus, have broadcasting slots, whether they're the right times, the wrong times, or irrelevant. Just having some consistency with that. Yes, everybody selling out in the opening day weekend would be fantastic if that is to be the case. But for me, it's about well, how many of those are you going to capture to be returning fans again and again. Let's get the latest from the PGA Championship at Wentworth. Uh, Ian Carter is watching the action. Well, a fantastic finish to his round four. Tommy Fleetwood with four birdies in his last four holes, coming home in 31 for a round of 64. That's eight under par, and he's one ahead of another Englishman, Matthew Jordan, at the top of this leaderboard. Jordan round in 65 a little earlier on. Shane Lowry, a good day as well, a six under par, 66. A 68 for Rory McIlroy, who birdied the last, as did his playing partners, Matt Fitzpatrick, for a 69. And the defending champion, Billy Horschel, who was also round in a four under par, 60. Ian for now, thank you. And finally, Lewis Hamilton will start this Sunday's Italian Grand Prix from the back of the grid. The seven-time world champion has been handed an engine penalty with plans to take on his fourth power unit of the campaign in Monza, one more than is allowed under Formula One rules. For now, though, that's your latest from BBC Sport. The voice of the UK. This is Five Live. Nahal Arthanaika. Listen live on digital, online, smart speaker, or the BBC Sounds app. Good afternoon. It's 25 minutes to three. If you're just joining us, a reminder of the news from Buckingham Palace. The Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. Members of her family are gathering at Balmoral. Robert Jobson joins us now, Royal Editor at the London Evening Standard. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us, Robert. Pleasure. Uh, can I ask you, in, in your experience, uh, deep that it is, uh, what were your initial thoughts, your emotions, uh, when you heard this statement coming out of Balmoral by the Queen's doctors? Um, I heard a couple of rumours uh, a little bit beforehand. Um, and um, people had phoned me, so I was I was waiting for a statement, to be honest. And when the statement came using the words doctors were concerned, that immediately jumps out of the page, doesn't it? Because normally the palace wouldn't use those sort of that sort of language. Um, coupled with the fact that we learned quite quickly that the Prince of Wales, who was in Scotland already, had gone straight to see the Queen and cancelled engagements, along with the Duchess of Cornwall. And now all of the uh, royal family are on their way to... But more including Prince William, although Kate and the children, of course, are staying at Windsor. That does suggest something very serious is afoot. Um, 
I would say without it's, and trying to maintain as much respect as possible here that we should be prepared for the worst but pray for the best. I think that's probably the best way of putting it. Indeed. Um, Robert, what do you take from the tone of the statement from Buckingham Palace? Well, the language is very important. As I say, I think that the language using the word concerned is unusual. Um, and I would be concerned uh, for her health as a result. They will be doing everything they can to make sure the doctors that she is as comfortable as possible. But, you know, one thing that is remarkable about Her Majesty is her ability to rally, and she's done that in the past. And I'm sure all of our all of your listeners will be hoping that she manages to do that, as well as do I and many others. Um, but there she was fulfilling her duties right to the to the to the recently when she swore in um, Liz Truss as her fifteenth prime minister. She was at her boxes again um, yesterday, but couldn't fulfil a meeting with the a Zoom meeting with the privy councillors. So I think that sort of did say uh, say something too. It's a, I mean, this is a woman that is so dutiful and so dedicated that she would have done that if she had felt up to it. Um, talking of that handover of power earlier this week, when it was announced that it would be at Balmoral, breaking with tradition, again, Robert, what were your thoughts? Well, of course, that, that story, I think the Sun broke that story a couple of weeks ago, and then it was confirmed a week or so later that that was going to be the case. I thought that was fair enough, to be honest, even... In this day and age, I think that it, it, as it's, it wasn't the Queen's fault that there was a Tory leadership election when it was. She goes to Balmoral when she does and returns usually in the middle of October. So um, my feeling was that it was the right thing to do. Um, but there, it, was, it was significant. It was a significant moment because it showed the, you know, we were talked about mobility issues, but that really does show the frailty of the monarch rather than just her inability to move um, uh, and fly down. Um, and of course, this year has been an incredibly important year for Her Majesty, hasn't it, Robert? Well, we all saw, didn't we? We all cheered and uh, well, most of us, when she appeared on the balcony and smiled, you know, when she appeared with Paddington Bear um, on that wonderful cameo. Um, I think the Jubilee celebrations were were, were wonderful and an, and an, an, apt, an apt tribute to a, a truly remarkable a public servant. Robert, thank you very much indeed. Robert Jobson there, Royal Editor at the London Evening Standard. If you are just joining us here at 20 to 3 on BBC Radio 5 Live, the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral. A statement from Buckingham Palace say her doctors are concerned for her health following further evaluation this morning. But the palace adds that the 96-year-old monarch remains comfortable. Prince Charles, Camilla and Princess Anne are at Balmoral and Prince William is travelling there. Prince Harry and Meghan are also making their way to Scotland, as are Prince Andrew and Prince Edward. Let me read you some of the reaction to this news. Prime Minister Liz Truss has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. A Labour leader, Keir Starmer, has said, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has posted on Twitter, all of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all the royal family at this time. Mark Drakeford, Wales First Minister, has said concerned to hear news from Buckingham Palace. I send my best wishes to Her Majesty and her family on behalf of the people of Wales. The leader of the Liberal Democrats, Red Davy, has tweeted in response to the statement on the Queen's health from Buckingham Palace, the whole nation's thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family as we all hope and pray for her full recovery. Please do stay with us here on Five Live as we bring you up-to-date information and a reminder of the news this afternoon that the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health. But as I said, she is comfortable and resting. Family members are gathering to be with her at Balmoral. Earlier on, I spoke to our Royal Correspondent, Damien Grammaticus, who was at Buckingham Palace. So, well, all we know is the statement uh, from the palace uh, that the Queen, uh, that her 
doctors are looking after her uh, in Balmoral. Um, this came through as we were uh, here in London. The political leaders were all assembled in Parliament. Uh, the palace issued their statement and we know then that members of her family are, have been travelling up or are travelling up uh, to Scotland. Uh, to be with her and that announcement was followed uh, by uh, statements we heard from the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, who has put out a statement saying the whole country will be deeply concerned uh, by uh, the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. She added that her thoughts and the thoughts of people across the United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. The opposition leader, leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, very similar uh, within uh, minutes. He had re repeated those statements saying, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. And he added too that his thoughts uh, are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family. Uh, and he, along with everyone across the United Kingdom, were hoping for her recovery. Again, similar statements we've heard then from around the country so from Scotland from the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon saying all of us are feeling uh, profoundly concerned at the reports about Her Majesty's health her thoughts uh, and wishes are with the Queen and all the royal family again from uh, the uh, First Minister of Wales Mark Drakeford he uh, similarly uh, also extended his own uh, concern he said to hear the news from Buckingham Palace sent his best wishes to Her Majesty and her family uh, on behalf of the people of Wales from Northern Ireland Sir Geoffrey Donaldson uh, leader of the Democratic Unionist Party his thoughts and prayers and those uh, of the Democratic Unionist Party he said all with Her Majesty and other political parties too so Sir Ed Davey uh, leader of the Liberal Democrats again very similar the whole nation's thoughts and prayers with Her Majesty the Queen uh, and her family and we all hope and pray for a full recovery so uh, concern uh, best wishes uh, and uh, concern for her family too being expressed right across the country um, Johnny Diamond has reported for the BBC that uh, all of the Queen's children are either at or are travelling to Balmoral the Princess Royal is at Balmoral and the Duke of York and the Earl and Countess of Wessex are on their way to the Queen's Scottish home that's what sources are saying. Um, Damien, can you give us an overview of Her Majesty's health in recent times? Well, we know, uh, of course, that you know, she, uh, she's in her 90s. She has had uh, health, uh, like anyone, uh, some health uh, you know, concerns. Uh, she, the most recent of those, uh, of course, there was concern about uh, COVID not that long ago. Uh, the uh, most recent one, of course, was the concern uh, described by Buckingham Palace and her doctors as uh, concerns about her mobility. Uh, that was the reason why, while she's been up in uh, Balmoral on her traditional summer break there, that we saw the events this week where rather than do what she'd done with all the other times during her reign when uh, she's uh, a new prime minister has taken office that where she has in Buckingham Palace invited the new prime minister to form a new government she did not do that this year she stayed in Balmoral and instead the political leaders traveled up there from London so Boris Johnson traveled up to tender his resignation on Tuesday shortly afterwards Liz Truss who just on Monday had been confirmed as the winner of the uh, that uh, election to be the new leader of the Conservative Party she just after Boris Johnson tendered his resignation she had an audience with the Queen in Balmoral was invited by the Queen to form a new government uh, and all of that was because of those uh, mobility issues as they were described by her doctors uh, and uh, then the political leaders came back here but of course as you've been hearing today the, the concern now is that what the uh, doctors may be concerned about the statement from the palace um, seems to suggest that, that what the doctors are concerned about now is not the mobility issues but, but uh, something different. Our Royal Correspondent Damien Grammaticus there who was at Buckingham Palace earlier on today when she spoke to me. Um, 
Here is the statement from Buckingham Palace again on the health of the Queen. A palace spokesperson said, following further evaluation this morning, the Queen's doctors are concerned for Her Majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The Queen remains comfortable and at Balmoral. There, of course, have been a number of statements going out, as you can imagine, uh, from the Prime Minister, leader of the opposition. Uh, Ephraim Mervis, the chief rabbi, has said, Her Majesty the Queen is very much in my prayers today, and I know that Jewish communities around the Commonwealth will join me in wishing her a full and swift recovery. The Muslim Council of Britain has said, Our thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and the royal family at this time. We wish Her Majesty a swift and lasting recovery. Emily Andrews is the former royal editor of The Mail on Sunday and The Sun and joins us now. Emily, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Al. Um, Emily, what did you think when you heard the statement from Her Majesty's doctors, Balmoral? Well, as you would expect from royal correspondents and journalists, there had been um, behind the scenes some... Uh, chatter this morning. We, um, I knew that Prince Charles had left his house, um, Dumfries, in the um, southwest of Scotland, and had was get, was going an, on an unannounced visit to Balmoral. And Camilla had um, cancelled an engagement that she was due in Scotland, and so immediately I was slightly concerned. And then at lunchtime, around twelve twenty-five, we had that statement from Buckingham Palace that the Queen was under um, medical supervision. And this is quite an unprecedented statement, as, as other commentators and, and, and journalists have, have told you. There's, in the 15 years I've been reporting on the royal family, they have never issued anything like this on the health of the Queen, nor indeed on, on, on the health of Prince Philip. We were told, you know, he's going into hospital and routine operations, etc. but never this kind of a member of the royal family is at home. And effectively, you know, the doctors are concerned. So this is a very concerning time. Our thoughts, obviously, are with the Queen and members of her family, because this is a this is it is obviously of utmost importance to the United Kingdom and the world. But this is this is a family. This is still a very, you know, troubling and worrying time for a family. And we can't speculate. We just have to wait for Buckingham Palace to tell us officially what the situation is. But I know that they would have thought very long and hard before even issuing a statement like this, because they know, the press operation at Buckingham Palace know what effect it would have to issue such a statement. Speculation, concern, all the things, you know, the sort of, it would create the world storm as it were, and they do not do something like this without great thought and unless it's serious. Indeed, and we are pointedly avoiding speculation and sensationalism. Absolutely, uh, Emily. Um, what has uh, Her Majesty's health been like over the last year? Well, I mean, if we can talk about her more generally, I mean, for a 96-year-old, for Indeed. a non yes, I think quite. her health has been amazing. Yes, quite. Absolutely. I mean, she, Especially she, she got COVID real... earlier on this year, didn't yes, she, Emily? I mean, yeah. I Absolutely astonishing. She's 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 a role model to us all, really. Keep calm, carry on, just get on with the job. Um, she's been in robust health for much of her life. Um, obviously, she's always been careful, mindful of the fact that she is head of state, and it's not just her own personal health that she has to think of. But it, it you know that how she is physically has a has a much greater meaning and importance. But you know, she she, she rode up until last year practically, which was astonishing. She never the one concession the Queen never made um to her generation, she never wore a hat, she never wore a hard hat. I ride myself and um, you know, the thought of riding without a hard hat is just you know, absolutely uh, non negotiable. Well, well let alone being ninety five and riding. I know. Riding in a headscarf at ninety five. Well she's riding her fell ponies by that point. So they they are they're not one of her um, you know, more excitable thoroughbreds. But yeah, she's had she's enjoyed very good health and there's been occasional um you know, she might have broken a wrist or she might have um, you know, strained something. But she's been she's been in remarkably good health up until, as you say, the last year. Last autumn there was an unannounced visit to a hospital. And I think if you can contrast what happened last October with what's happened today, she was taken to hospital for tests. We, we we've still never been told 
why she had an overnight stay in London at the King Edward the Seventh Hospital, and the palace did not tell anyone. In fact, I know a number of royal correspondents asked the palace, um, and they were they some of them felt they had been misled when the palace the next day said that she had had an overnight stay. Their hand was rather forced by um, a newspaper, I think, to put out that information. So we know that the palace did not like to put out information about the health of the Queen, precisely not to, you know, so as not to, A, not to worry people, and B, because her health is very private. It's a very private affair. She did go into hospital. We still don't know why. Um, she spent a night there. Increasingly, we have seen her do less. But when I say do less, I mean, she, she, she's still done a huge amount for her age. She's handed over investitures to members of her family, like Princess Anne and Prince Charles and Prince William. She has handed over some of her patronages and her charitable work. But the, but the core, and of course, you know, the state opening of Parliament, Charles um, stood in for her for the first time this year. But the core business of, of you know, ruling, she, she has still absolutely done. She still had her red boxes every night. We saw those lovely pictures on Tuesday of her um, of Liz Truss kissing her hand to be officially made our new prime minister. She had a private audience with Boris Johnson to accept, uh, formally accept his resignation. And I understand she had a private, she did a private honours ceremony on Tuesday. This was not for public consumption. It was a private, she was con conveying an honour, a lieutenant of Victorian order on a member of her staff, a member of her household who'd, who'd done exceptionally good service. And she still managed to go through with that ceremony, short ceremony, despite it not being, a, you know, a massive public duty. And I think that really sums her up on the day that she said goodbye to her 14th Prime Minister and welcomed her 15th. She still took the time to, to make that particular person feel incredibly humbled and special in that short ceremony to make them a Lieutenant of Victorian Order, which is a, a sign of a mark of, of real commendation for, for someone who works in her household. And so... I, I was quite surprised, if I'm honest, when I when I when I heard some of the news this morning. Um, and we have to look at her life as a whole and, and say she has been, she has had a very robust and healthy life. But but for any of us, if we have family members who've, who've reached you know their 90s, it, it is it is old age, and and that comes you know, with, with toil upon the, upon the body. She's had mobility problems. She's had issues with her knees, issues with her hips. We saw her with, we increasingly have seen her with her walking stick. Um, and so in some respects, I suppose it is, it is unsurprising, but I'm, I'm not sure any of us will, will ever be prepared. Um, Emily, um, honing back in on this week, um, of course, a prime minister travelling not to Buckingham Palace but to Balmoral is unusual, to say the least. But then, of course, came the news of the Privy Council uh, mm. on Wednesday and then, of course, the news today. Um, taking you through each one, um, firstly, how did you feel when it was Balmoral, not Buckingham Palace? Then secondly, news of her not uh, being able to see the new cabinet, the Privy Council. Well, I think, first of all, taking the fact that the outgoing and incoming Prime Minister had to go to Balmoral, I actually felt that it was, excuse my words carefully, I felt Please that do. it was very sensible for um, Boris Johnson and whoever won the leadership contest to go to Balmoral rather than force a 96-year-old to take a plane back to London, to Buckingham Palace, just essentially for two 10 minute 15 minute meetings you know boris and and, and liz truss are much younger than the queen and Please. i felt that protocol you know should be waived it doesn't really matter whether it's a buckingham palace or, or balmoral for the for the queen to accept a resignation and to officially um you know uh, not anoint um our new prime minister what matters is that she herself is doing it and so I was pleased, actually, that, that, that she was staying in Balmoral. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Boris Johnson and Liz Truss were, were, were equally um, happy to go, to go up to, to Balmoral Castle. The Privy Council was, was certainly much more serious because that is to swear in the members of the new cabinet who sit on the Privy Council. Now, the Privy Council 
are the committee that meets, particularly if there is to be a new monarch, they are the people that meet to discuss, to help organise all of those arrangements. So I was surprised that the it was going to be a Zoom appearance by the Queen. She's been very, she's embraced new technology with gusto during the pandemic 2020 and 21. We saw a lot more of her on the screen when she was doing Zoom engagements. And I was surprised that she cancelled that because it was going to be another Zoom engagement. The Privy Council were going to meet in person in London and she was going to Zoom in via the internet. And so it wasn't particularly taxing. So I was surprised that she had cancelled that. And it was a cancelment. It wasn't a postponement. And it wasn't Charles or William's county's estate standing in on her behalf, which again surprised me. But then I also know that she would she views swearing in the Privy Council, the new members of the Privy Council, as the incredibly important, one of the most important duties of her of her of her um, role. So I'm sure yesterday she hoped to just postpone it and do it in person. Then, of course, she's obviously taken a turn for the worse overnight. And, and we're, in, we're in this position this morning, or this afternoon. Emily, thank you for taking time to join us here on Five Live. Emily Andrews, their former royal editor of The Mail on Sunday and The Sun. We know the Queen's children are travelling to or are already at Balmoral. Our reporter Ben Phillip is there for us. Ben, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, remind us where we're at, Ben. Who is there currently and who do we expect to be travelling there shortly? Yes, well, I'm currently outside the famous highly protected gates of the Queen's royal Deeside estate here in North East Scotland, Balmoral Castle. Uh, a fairly normal scene this afternoon, I, I would say. Any, uh, when any of the, the royal family are in residence here, there are armed police at the gates and uh, also uh, uh, there are a number of tourists in the area uh, as well, several of which have now, uh, now appear to be gathering just to see uh, really what's going on here. There's a pretty sizable group of journalists and camera crews uh, now assembling on a, a grassy bank opposite the gates and just in the last hour, police have been laying out barriers, uh, I suppose, to maintain a distance uh, from from the gates here. Um, as you say, uh, we're being told that all of the Queen's children are either at or on their way here to Balmoral. We know that Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla, uh, are currently with the Queen. They've been staying uh, nearby uh, on the estate here in Aberdeenshire and we're being told that Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, uh, is also uh, yeah. on route uh, to Aberdeenshire. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. We're going to have to leave it there, but thank you our reporter Ben Phillip at Balmoral. The Voice of the UK. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. With the Five Live News, I'm Sophie Yardley. Buckingham Palace says doctors are concerned for the Queen's health and have recommended that she remains under medical supervision. The Queen's at Balmoral, her estate in Aberdeenshire. The palace statement says she's comfortable. Our royal correspondent, Helena Wilkinson, is at Windsor Castle. We are now seeing members of the royal family either already at Balmoral or they are travelling to Balmoral. We know that Prince William is on his way to visit Her Majesty, who is 96 years old. Uh, doctors say they are concerned about her health and that she will remain under medical supervision. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are also travelling to see her. The new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, says the whole country will be deeply concerned. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, says the prayers of the nation are with the Queen. Dickie Arbiter is a former press secretary. There will be concern throughout the, 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 the world, uh, and not just the Commonwealth or the United Kingdom, but I think in every country that has dealings with the UK or every country that has had a visit by the Queen, she is an international figure. She's been on the throne for 70 years. That is a long time. The changing of the guard, which was due to take place outside Buckingham Palace tomorrow morning, has been called off. A sign where the traditional ceremony takes place is letting tourists know it's been cancelled. In other news, Liz Truss has announced a plan to limit the average annual household gas and electricity bill to £2,500 from October. The scheme will be in place for two years. Laura Retty is a personal finance expert. It feels unequal and unfair that there are probably people that maybe aren't on benefits who are just about managing, who are going to have to pay double their energy bills. And yet there are people who can absolutely afford to pay three, four times 
and who are getting the same relief. There'll be similar support for businesses, schools, hospitals and charities for six months. Full details of the plans are on the BBC News website. The Prime Minister's also announced that she'll lift the temporary ban on fracking in England and issuing new oil and gas exploration licences for the North Sea. And one in eight people in England is now waiting for routine hospital treatment. New data shows the overall total is 6.8 million. The government's expected expected to unveil a plan for the health service next week. Now with the Five Live Sport, here's Jonathan McKeith. Sophie, thank you. Chelsea are set to appoint Graham Potter as their new manager within the next 24 hours. Potter and Chelsea owner Todd Bowley reached a verbal agreement following talks on Wednesday. Chelsea will pay Potter's current club at Brighton in excess of £21 million in compensation. Meanwhile, Chelsea women's boss Emma Hayes says the women's game still has a long way to go despite the success of the England national team at the Euros. Hayes was speaking ahead of the new women's Super League season, which starts on Saturday. And England's Tommy Fleetwood has a one-shot lead at golf's PGA Championship at Wentworth. He carded a 800 par 64 for his opening round. World number three Rory McIlroy is four shots back, while US Open champion Matt Fitzpatrick a finished three under par. BBC Radio 5 Live. The voice of the UK. Nahal Arthanaika. Listen live, pause, rewind and discover with the BBC Sounds app. Good afternoon. If you're just joining us at three minutes past three, we're bringing you the news from Buckingham Palace that the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral. Her doctors are concerned for her health, but she is said to be comfortable and resting. Earlier, I spoke to the BBC's royal correspondent, Johnny Diamond, and this is what he had to say. The fact that this statement has been made at all and the nature of the statement is an indication of the seriousness of the situation. If the Queen had a cold or was some way likely incapacitated, they wouldn't have said anything. And the fact that they have said that her doctors are concerned for her health is another indication that this has a degree of seriousness which we have not seen before. And the final point to note is the fact that all of the Queen's children, the BBC understands, are now either at Balmoral or making their way towards Balmoral. That's the, the castle in Aberdeenshire in Scotland where the Queen has been spending the summer. The Prince of Wales is there, the Duke of York, the Earl of Wessex and the Princess Royal Princess Anne are making their way there now. That's all four of her children and second in line to the throne, the Duke of Cambridge, that's Prince William, is also making his way to Balmoral. Uh, you know, we're not going to spend hours speculating about the Indeed. condition of her health. We don't know what it is. There's not much point to be gained by that. But it is very clear that this is an unusual situation. And those three things, the fact of the statement, the, the nature of the statement, the fact that her children are all there or making their way there is an indication of the seriousness of it. Alongside, of course, that statement that you played from the Speaker of the House, the fact the Archbishop of Canterbury has sent his best wishes as well. The, the mood is deeply sombre amongst the different bits of the British state as they think of how the Queen is and as they send their best wishes to her and her family. Let's go back a couple of days. On Tuesday, the Queen saw the incoming and outgoing Prime Ministers, um, Boris Johnson on his way out, Liz Truss on her way in. They flew up to Balmoral. Um, the Queen had wanted, we are told, to go down to Buckingham Palace where that ceremony is normally held, but um, instead uh, her staff and her doctors said, no, I want you to stay in Balmoral. But she was smiling, she was uh, on her feet, if supported by a stick. Um, she seemed frail, as any 96-year-old would do, but Indeed. she seemed fine. On Wednesday, a scheduled meeting of what's called the Privy Council, which again, one of those odd organs of state, but in this case, it, it was effectively the Cabinet, the new Cabinet, where the new Cabinet gets sworn in and the Prime Minister gets sworn in. There was a, going to be a video conference with the Queen as Head of State. She would have remained in Balmoral, they would have been in London, video conference. That got cancelled cancelled um, with little explanation other than the Queen had had a rather full day on Tuesday and at the time I thought well she must be very tired um, and fair enough again 96 years old and we know that she has mobility issues and then this morning this statement this pretty extraordinary statement uh, the fact that that has come so quickly 
amidst a swirl of rumours um, is a sign that things have clearly dipped for the Queen. We do not know the situation, but coupled with the fact that her children are on their way, the timetable suggests that she has clearly um, gone downhill rather rapidly and that her medical staff, her doctors, are clearly concerned. Johnny Diamond there, our Royal Correspondent. If you're just joining us this afternoon, Buckingham Palace say the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral with doctors concerned for her health, but she is said to be comfortable and resting. There has, as you can imagine, been statements from the Prime Minister, the Labour leader, the First Minister of Scotland, the Wales First Minister. I shall read some of them out to you now. The Prime Minister Liz Truss has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, My thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. The Labour leader, Keir Starmer, has said, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom in hoping for her recovery. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has tweeted, All of us are feeling profoundly concerned at reports of Her Majesty's health. My thoughts and wishes are with the Queen and all of the royal family at this time. Mark Drakeford, Wales First Minister, has said, Concerned to hear the news from Buckingham Palace, I send my best wishes to Her Majesty and her family on behalf of the people of Wales. Tony Blair, former Prime Minister, has said, It is deeply concerning to hear today's news from Buckingham Palace. My thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this worrying time. Robert Hardman joins us now, Daily Mail journalist and author of Queen of Our Times. Good afternoon, Robert. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Firstly, Robert, your reaction to the statement when it was first issued by uh, Buckingham Palace? Well, like everyone else, I was very worried about it because normally the Queen has always made a point of not commenting on the state of her health unless uh, there's a very clear uh, medical reason uh, in the past has been because she's had to miss some important engagement or, or, or go to hospital. Um, and the fact that uh, um, the palace uh, deemed it fit to put out a statement saying that, you know, due to concerns of her with her health, uh, she's under medical supervision. That was highly unusual. The fact that all the family are now converging on Bell Moral, um, as Johnny Diamond was saying just there, is, is, is an indication that um, you know, that, that, that her, her medical condition has deteriorated considerably and it, you know it's extraordinary to think just just two days ago there she was bidding farewell to one prime minister welcoming another um, and I think that, that the shots of that um, you know I, I thought um, showed a, a you know a monarch very much still um, uh, you know in, 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 in charge and enjoying her role and 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 as I, I think we can only echo all those statements that you've just heard there from leaders past and present, um, you know, uh, hoping for the best and sending her their very best wishes. But I think we should also bear in mind that, you know, it, Britain is, is obviously, I mean, it's, it's, it, one just only needs to listen to the airwaves to see the impact that, that this is having here. But I mean, let's remember, she's head of state of 14 other countries around the world. Um, and, and they are having um, similar uh, concerns right now. This is a, uh, a very dark moment globally. Robert, um, as author of Queen of Our Times, by times, of course, we mean seven decades of mm. public service. Mm. Um, an extraordinary energy that Her Majesty had. So when we talk about her winding down her public duties, mm -hmm. she still has a lot on, especially when you consider Robert, of course, she is 96 years old. Yeah, I mean, she, she is unlike any monarch in our history. I mean, she's our longest lived, longest serving, longest reigning monarch. And that, that sense of public duty predated her accession to the throne in 1952. She's the last uh, head of state in the world today who wore uniform in the Second World War. Um, she was meeting world leaders long before she became queen. There isn't really anyone of any note since the Second World War um, who she hasn't met. Uh, you know, she's, she's, she's met 14 US presidents. Nobody else in history has ever done that. She's, she just stands for this constancy, this sense of permanence and stability. Um, and I think, you know, over the years, people have probably taken her for granted um, often. And, and, and suddenly at times like this, we all realise, you know, how precious she is. Um, Robert, speaking earlier on to previous guests, 
uh, some have mentioned that while perhaps uh, opinions differ on other members of the royal family, there seems to be constant adulation for Her Majesty the Queen. You've also already touched on elements of why that is, but if we can dig a little bit deeper, give a sense of, of why she is so enduringly popular in the minds of British people. Uh, I I think um, President Obama summed it up very well um, when he spoke about her authenticity in, a, in an ever-changing world where pretty much every politician will at some point, um, let's say, let you down, um, where um, public figures come and go. Here you have this, this, this titanic figure who, um, who everybody knows. She must be the most famous woman in the world. Everyone has a very clear sense of who she is and what she is. And, and that never changes. We, we know that we can rely on her. Um, we know that she is uh, the, the, this, this figure who's just been part of our lives since, uh, well, since, since, certainly since I've been alive. I mean, you now have to be well into your 70s to uh, remember another face on the coins, on the banknotes, on the stamps, on the TV on Christmas Day. And she is part of our national landscape. And uh, we're suddenly having to realize that, you know, it, it, much as it may have seemed that uh, in the past that, you know, she was this sort of timeless figure in all our lives, um, you know, those, those years are, are catching up with her. And at 96, um, you know, I, I think we just have to um, ensure that, um, as the palace statement says, that, you know, she's comfortable and she's at Balmoral. I think that's very important because there's probably nowhere in the world that she's happier uh, than on mm. Dean's side in the Highlands. Um, Robert, over those seven decades of public service, um, policies change, of course, <laughs> prime ministers change, values change, attitudes change, but she has remained a constant. What do you think it is that, that anchors those values that she has? Well, it's, we've often heard of her sense of duty, but um, it, it's not a, a sort of a, a, a cliche. I mean, it's there. It was drummed into her from a very early age, and she learned that, most notably from her father, who she adored. Um, you know, history shows that, you know, some, some monarchs and their heirs don't get on. This monarch and, uh, and her predecessor, her father, they, they were absolutely devoted to each other. Um, so that sense of duty. But with that, a very clear sense that she learned both from her uh, her father, but it was also something that uh, Prince Philip believed in very strongly, is that monarchy needs to move with the times. It can't stand still. It's monarchs who, who don't adapt um, uh, are the ones that, that tend to um, fall by the wayside. And, you, you know, you, you, as a monarch, you can't, you can't be ahead of the times. You certainly can't worry about being in fashion because any, anyone who's in fashion sure as night follows day then goes out of fashion but you have to move with the times and it's a very difficult act to get right to to represent the nation unto itself when you've got arch traditionalists who think that everything should be done the old way and you've got arch modernizers who think everything needs to change and you've got to somehow um, carry uh, a, a, a sort of divided nation forward and, and you can look back at, at numerous moments in, in, in post-war history when this country has been uh, you know, divided or, or unhappy or traumatized and, and and there is this this one presence that does unite that does um you know make everyone set aside their petty differences and, and uh, get on side with her and um, when researching your book queen of our times robert um even with the knowledge that you have of her, what were the mm. things that surprised you? One of the things that really surprised me, um, uh, although I suppose when I look back, it, it, it shouldn't have surprised me, but um, calmness, um, that, that old adage, keep calm and carry on. Um, she never panics. I, I, I couldn't find any examples of her rushing to judgment on anything. Um, you know, there may have been moments during her reign um, and, you know, I, when, when people may say, well, she should have done X or Y sooner, or, you know, the monarchy didn't act fast enough. Um, but she doesn't panic. She doesn't um, take snap, rash decisions. She's very cool in a crisis. Uh, and, and one of her oldest and closest friends said to me, you know, that, that, that um, came from her father's outlook on life. Her father had served in the Royal Navy, often took a sort of 
sailor's view on, on a crisis. And, and his, his, his sort of watchword was always, this too shall pass, this storm shall pass. And I think that's been a great uh, asset to her, as has her faith. I mean, her Christian faith, uh, let's not underestimate the importance of that to her. And uh, that's, that's been a very key part of her, her life, often overlooked, but um, central to who she is. How do you think Robert Her Majesty herself will react to being, as the word is being bandied around, ordered by her doctors to rest? Uh, she's very, I mean, she's always been very commonsensical. I mean, no one orders, orders the Queen to do anything. No, quite. Uh, they, no, advise, quite. they advise her. <laughs> quite. Um, but she's very good at taking advice. Um, and, you know, in, in, in the last year, um, we have seen uh, a, a sort of a succession of unexpected um, uh, developments where she hasn't been able to attend things. And we, there are things that we know she would dearly love to attend. Um, and, and her doctors have clearly said, look, this is, this is not a good idea. I don't, I don't think she, uh, she, she's someone who would um, you know, insist on doing something um, rashly. If, 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 the, if the doctors say, look, this is not a good idea, she'll, she'll take that advice on board. I mean, I'm sure her doctors know, of course they know, you know, they know the sort of person she is. I mean, they're, 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 you're dealing with a, 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 a very dutiful, very conscientious, um, uh, national, public, international figure whose whose capacity to to follow advice and and and, and act wisely um, has stood her in extremely good stead for now for over seventy years. So um, you know whatever whatever the the, the medics are saying, um, you know, she will she will listen to them. Um, Robert, um, from a personal perspective, what do you admire most about Her Majesty the Queen? I think it's just that that capacity to just whatever um, the, the 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 daily problems might be, and, and whether they're you know domestic, national, political, uh, that that sense that uh, you know I, I have to get on with this job. I, I I I can't I can't have a day off. I don't have holidays. I mean, there are only two days of the year when she doesn't get a red box left outside her door. One is her birthday. One is Christmas Day, uh, and and it's part of her. It's who she is. She doesn't regard it as a job. It's an existence. And it's, uh, I, I think she's, she's loved being queen. She, she, she thoroughly enjoys the job. I think occasionally, sometimes sort of dramas and, and, and media portrayals sort of um, will dwell on the crises of her reign. And there's certainly been plenty of crises. But, but overall, um, she has um, relished her, her place in national life, taken it very seriously, never uh, given any thought to, um, you know, putting her feet up. Um, and, and she, she is the sort of, you know, I think she is the great exemplar of, of public service. Robert, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Robert Hardman there, Daily Mail journalist and author of Queen of Our Times. If you're just joining us here on Five Live, we're bringing you the news from Buckingham Palace that the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral. Her doctors are concerned for her health, but she is said to be comfortable and resting. Our Scotland correspondent, Lorna Gordon, joins us now, who is at Balmoral. Lorna, good afternoon. Afternoon, Nahal. Remind us of the situation, Lorna. Who is there currently and who we expect to be travelling there? Well, we expect all the Queen's children uh, to be arriving at Balmoral. Prince Charles and Camilla are, we understand, already here. Um, we understand a plane will be arriving at Aberdeen Airport within the next 15 or 20 minutes with seven other members of the royal household. We don't know who, um, but that plane has come from Northolt. They will then make the journey from Aberdeen Airport to Balmoral. Usually that is a journey by car. It takes a little over an hour. Um, so we are expecting all the Queen's children to be here by this afternoon. Uh, this is a very private area. It's a very secluded area. It's an area where both the Queen and her family are very fond of this 50,000 acre estate on Royal D side. The road outside Balmoral is still open to the public and there are police 
patrolling the main gates, as there are always, but you do get a sense there are more police than usual here today, more members of the public, and of course, more media standing outside. Um, but the car park that's just a couple of hundred meters away that is usually packed with with cars of the people visiting the area, looking at the, the grounds around Balmoral, that has been shut to the public today. So whilst the area is still open, the police are starting to, to restrict the number of people who are able to visit the entrance to Balmoral at this time. Um, will um, members of the public and assembled members of the press uh, see other members of the royal family as they arrive, uh, Lorna? Or are there several entrances to Balmoral? I can imagine there are the size of Balmoral. I think there are other entrances to Balmoral, but it is usual practice for uh, people visiting the estate to normally arrive by the main gates. So if, uh, if that uh, entourage, those seven members of the household that we are told are arriving at Aberdeen Airport very shortly, do make their way by car uh, here to Balmoral, we would anticipate seeing them uh, come through the gate, which is just a few meters behind me. The, uh, the, the gates to the estate are shut at the moment, but we would anticipate them arriving through these gates it's uh, normally the back routes are taken by other members of the royal family when they're in residence in other houses in the area such as Burke Hall which is uh, Prince Charles's residence in the area but yes we would see those other members uh, of, of the family um, arriving we would anticipate seeing the other members of the fi family arriving and using the the main gates uh, when they get here so the Queen would usually spend the summer at Balmoral, is that right, Lorna? So is it unusual yes. for her to be here still in early September? No, this is entirely normal. She's, she loves this area. She's been coming here since she was a, a child. Um, she, she has a great affinity with the area. She arrived here this year, mid-July. It is said by some to be the place where she feels most at home. It, it's a large estate. She's afforded a great deal of privacy here. You know, the public actually from time to time have seen her walking in the hills around the area. She attends the local craft curve and mixes with the congregation here and there's a, there's a lot of loyalty in this area towards both Her Majesty the Queen and her family. Uh, they, they're very they're very respectful and they're very they're very loyal towards her and very protective uh, as well so you know she, it's an area where she can feel very much at home we're always told by people who live in this area where she can she can drive her car take her dogs for a walk she holds an annual ball here here, uh, her family hold barbecues, you know, she feels at home, she spends every summer here, uh, and it is normal for her to be here at this time of year. Lorna, thank you. Our Scotland correspondent, Lorna Gordon. Uh, the news from Buckingham Palace about the Queen came just as the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, was giving details of her plan to limit energy price rises for households and businesses. You can get full details of that on the BBC News website. MPs were giving the update on the Queen's health in the House of Commons by the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle. I wish to say something about the announcement which has just been made about Her Majesty. I know I speak on behalf of the entire House when I say that we send our best, best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and that she and the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this moment. I'm going to take no more just to, if there is anything else, we will update the House accordingly. Our political editor, Chris Mason, is in Downing Street and joins us now. Chris, very good afternoon to you. Um, Hello. Um, Liz Truss, Keir Starmer, many others releasing statements reacting to this news about the Queen's health this afternoon, haven't they, Chris? They have, yeah. And Nihal, it was, it was quite a moment. I was watching the proceedings in the House of Commons and it was the return of the cut and thrust of domestic party politics, a, a discussion, hugely important discussion, around energy bills with the winter around the corner and all of the concerns around the cost of living. And yet it became apparent, quite obviously and visibly apparent, 
that something was happening, that something was happening that involved the immediate briefing of the Prime Minister uh, and the Leader of the Opposition and the Speaker of the House of Commons with notes being passed uh, down the benches, uh, a government minister ensuring that that note also reached the Leader of the Opposition. And it was only just a couple of minutes after that that we received the statement uh, from Buckingham Palace. And, and here this afternoon, Nihala, at Westminster, a profound sense of concern because of the relationship that politics, that parliament, that government has with monarchy and in particular with the Queen as the figurehead of monarchy for so many decades. So just bring you some of those words of concern from our political leaders this afternoon. The Prime Minister uh, saying shortly after the release of Buckingham Palace's uh, statement, the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime. My thoughts and those of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. Uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, along with the rest of the country, I'm deeply worried by the news from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. My thoughts are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time, and I join everyone across the United Kingdom uh, in hoping for her recovery. And Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, uh, all of us are profoundly, feeling profoundly concerned at reports uh, of Her Majesty's health, and my thoughts and wishes are with the Queen uh, and her close family at this time. Um, Chris, what were the conversations taking place uh, amongst MPs earlier on this week, of course, because um, it is highly unusual, is it not, for a new Prime Minister not to be uh, sworn in, as it were, um, at Buckingham Palace? It is, it is, and, and it reflects the changing reality in, in recent weeks, in recent months, in, in recent years, as far as the Queen's health is concerned, perhaps inevitably for a woman of her age, that the amount uh, that we saw of her visibly uh, declined and she relied on uh, conducting much of her business um, electronically. But even that we know in recent days had become uh, too difficult, too tricky, uh, too tiring. So shortly after what was clearly a busy day where she was absolutely at the centre uh, of events the other day with the resignation of one Prime Minister in Boris Johnson and the arrival of another uh, in Liz Truss. Firstly, yes, it happened at Balmoral uh, rather than at Buckingham Palace to avoid that additional journey uh, for the Queen. But also shortly after uh, that very visible and public moment was something again, an event again that binds uh, this postcode, Westminster, with the palace uh, just up the road at the end of the Mall. And that's what's known as the Privy Council, a collection of senior political figures who, who gather uh, in, in front of the Queen and have conversations about matters of state. Now, one such Privy Council meeting, they happen very frequently, they're entirely normal and frequent and regular, was due to happen remotely uh, just the other day and it was postponed because it was said that the, Queen's, uh, the Queen needed to rest after the, uh, the events of seeing in seeing the resignation of one Prime Minister, witnessing that moment and then uh, the arrival of her 15th Prime Minister in, in Liz Truss. So we have seen uh, in events and actions and her approach to the job uh, in recent months, uh, a recognition of her age, a recognition of her frailty uh, in how she went about continuing to discharge her duties. Um, can you give us a sense, Chris, of uh, how the atmosphere changed in the Commons, in the Chamber, when this information became apparent to MPs there? It was instant. It was instant, or at least as quick as it took, for the information and the news that we were all about to learn to circulate amongst, amongst most of those members in there. So we were watching a debate that was at its most partisan and angry. There was a profound and remains a profound difference of opinion, arguably an ideological difference of opinion between the Conservatives, Labour, the Liberal Democrats and the Scottish National Party on the, this whole issue of supporting us with our energy bills. And there was, as you'd expect in the cockpit and the fulcrum of democracy, an angry argument. And yet, as that was happening, Sir Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, was on his feet. These messages were being passed to the leadership teams on the two sides of the chamber. And you could see when Angela Rayner, for instance, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, had been informed of what the rest of us were soon to learn, you could see in her demeanour 
instantly the gravity of what she'd just been told and similarly as the message was passed to the Prime Minister and it wasn't long after that that both the Leader of the Opposition uh, and indeed uh, the Prime Minister left the Chamber and then that statement uh, from Buckingham Palace was forthcoming. So uh, Westminster and politics feels a moment like this, like the rest of the country, mm -hmm. uh, with profound concern, but not least because of those constitutional binds that exist between government, parliament and monarchy. And in reality, in the lifetime of the vast majority of parliamentarians, monarchy means Her Majesty the Queen, such has been her longevity, her continuity. And that's the thing, I think, Nihal, as we reflect on uh, the Queen and the Queen's health on Five Live this afternoon, Politics is all about noise and anger and argument and change. And she is personified mm. as the head of state, yes. the exact opposite of all of those things. Uh, and that's how these two, if you like, institutions at the heart of the British constitutional arrangement sit together. And, and that's really fascinating, Chris, because earlier on I spoke to someone who spoke of the role that is played, the humility that is is imposed, some may say, uh, on our politicians by the fact that the Queen is there. Mm. Yeah. And you know what, there's, there's a few observations I can reflect on here, Nihal, on, on that very point. I travel in this job, and it's a privilege to do so, to international events, uh, summits of the G7 group of uh, rich nations or the uh, NATO Defence Alliance. And those gatherings are gatherings of lead heads of state and government, heads of state and government. And of course, in the UK constitutional settlement, the head of government, Liz Truss, the Prime Minister, is not the head of state, Her Majesty the Queen. That division of labour, if you like, at the heart of the British constitutional model. And I think you're right, that word humble is, it is an appropriate one in this context, because even amongst those parliamentarians, and indeed those listening to our conversation now, who might have scepticism about the idea of constitutional monarchy in the 21st century. Many, many, accepted not all, but many, many will still profoundly acknowledge uh, the scale of service and achievement and wisdom that the Queen, with the longevity of her service, uh, embodies and personifies. And from the perspective of prime ministers, they have this privilege every week of being able to have an audience with the Queen, in other words, a one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face meeting, entirely with discretion. And you know from your reporting of politics on, on your show, politics and discretion in almost any <laughs> other environment yes. Yes, just don't go no. together. No, no, no. Uh, leaks and briefings and uh, all the rest of it. And yet right at the heart of our system of governance is an opportunity for our temporary prime minister, for they are all temporary, to go and see a, a monarch who has felt anything other than temporary given the longevity of her reign and have this private conversation in which she can offer the wisdom of those decades and decades of experience of reading government papers, of meeting world leaders, of uh, hosting state, state events and offer that advice to a prime minister fully in the knowledge in both directions that that information will go no further than the room in which they're stood. And, and Chris, lastly, that was something that was mentioned to me earlier on in the show, when um, David Cameron was indiscreet, uh, alleging that mm. uh, the Queen had, uh, to use his words, purred when she'd heard about the result of the Scottish independence referendum. And that was an indiscretion, wasn't it? It was, yeah, and, and I suspect that when that indiscretion became public because it was overheard, it will have been excruciatingly embarrassing for the former Prime Minister, such as the nature and the sanctity of those uh, conversations. You may remember at around that time, the Queen had offered some very judicious observations, I think at Balmoral, if I remember rightly, in the days uh, prior to the Scottish independence referendum, which he had asked people, and I think the quote was, to think carefully uh, about the decision she was about to make. And in fact, one of her only other uh, more political public observations, because my goodness, she has been in her reign very, very sparing in uttering publicly what she thinks, also 
related to the UK constitution back in, I think, 1977, when there was a proposal for, as was then, further devolution to Scotland. That idea of the integrity of the United Kingdom, yes, a live political argument right now, of course, particularly in Scotland, to a degree, of course, over the last century or so in Northern Ireland, and perhaps to a lesser extent uh, in Wales, is something that she values hugely uh, as uh, the Queen of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and crucially, the Commonwealth, that international network of countries that means so much to her, that kind of legacy of empire morphing into an alternative institution that tries to find its way into a 21st century role. Uh, her, her passion for the Commonwealth as an institution, so, so striking, and we saw that, albeit articulated through Prince Charles at the recent Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit uh, in Rwanda. Chris, it's always great to have you here on Five Live, so thank you so much for joining us. Our political editor, Chris Mason there, who is in Downing Street. It's now 23 minutes to four. It's time for the headlines with Sophie Yardley. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio Five Live. Buckingham Palace says doctors are concerned for the Queen's health. The palace issued a statement earlier saying she's under medical supervision and is comfortable at her Balmoral estate. All of the Queen's children are either there or on their way. Prince William and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are also travelling to see her. The new Prime Minister Liz Truss says the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news. The former Prime Minister Sir Tony Blair says his thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty majesty and her family. Liz Truss has announced plans to limit energy bill rises for all households in England, Scotland and Wales for two years. A typical annual bill will be capped at £2,500 until 2024. There'll be similar support for businesses, schools, hospitals and charities for six months. Full details of the plan are available on the BBC News website. Now with the Five Live Sport, here's Jonathan McKeith. Sophie, thank you. Let's get an update from the Oval, where rain has meant no play on day one of the deciding test between England and South Africa. Elliot Aldroyd is there. Yes, no rain has been possible so far. There will be another inspection at four o'clock. We haven't had any serious rain for quite some time. The covers are currently off, but uh, just at the moment, we are keeping a close eye on the skies to the right as well, because that's where the weather has come from. And we may well be in for some more showers at four o'clock. So the only action that we've had, the only meaningful action that we've had here at the Oval, England won the toss and elected to bowl. So when this game does get underway at some point, South Africa will bat first. We'll have more news of that inspection after four o'clock. Ellie, for now, thank you. Uh, let's head to Surrey and the opening round of the PGA Championship. Uh, Ian Carter has the latest. Pretty damp conditions here. A day of low scoring. None better than Tommy Fleetwood on an English-dominated leaderboard. Fleetwood playing for his f the first time in over six weeks, round in 64. So leads at eight under par. He's one shot clear of fellow Englishman Matthew Jordan, who was round in 65 very early this morning. And Andy Sullivan, who's just birded the 16th, the former Ryder Cup player, within one shot of the lead. Good start for Shane Lowry as well. A six under par, 66 for him. Rory McIlroy was round in 68, as was the defending champion Billy Horschel, and the US Open winner Matt Fitzpatrick signed for a three under par 69. Ian, thank you. The Brighton boss Graham Potter is set to be appointed as the Chelsea manager in the next 24 hours. That's after reaching a verbal agreement with the London club. Chelsea sacked Thomas Tuchel yesterday. Chelsea will pay Brighton £21 million in compensation for Potter. The Europa League group stages begin tonight with Arsenal away at FC Zurich. That's a 5.45 kick-off. Manchester United are at home to Real Sociedad. That gets underway at 8 o'clock. United's Marcus Rashford will be looking to continue his good form. He scored twice against Arsenal on Sunday. Here's his manager, Eric Ten Hag. It started uh, with happiness. He really uh, he's coming here every day. He enjoys it. He's really smiling. Um, a really positive vibe. And now, if you put all those things together, like the way of play, uh, you want to transfer and improve different aspects of your game, and uh, you are happy. Uh, you will be uh, more contribution to the team. 
Meanwhile, Chelsea women's boss Emma Hayes says the women's game still has a long way to go despite the success of the England national team at the Euros. Hayes was speaking ahead of the new women's Super League season, which starts on Saturday. I'm just super excited for the weekend opening up at Stamford Bridge in front of a hopefully a sellout crowd. And I just feel a lot of love and a lot of gratitude being at Chelsea. Chelsea are defending champions and they begin the defence of that title at home to West Ham. The former Sunderland and Ipswich forward Marcus Stewart has been diagnosed with motor neuron disease. The 49-year-old is currently head of player development at National League Club at Yeovil. In a statement, he says it's his intention to continue to enjoy his work within football and in future use his platform to help raise awareness around MND. And finally, Lewis Hamilton will start this Sunday's Italian Grand Prix from the back of the grid. The seven-time world champion has been handed an engine penalty with plans to take on his fourth power unit of the campaign in Monza, one more than is allowed under Formula One rules. For now, though, that's your latest from BBC Sport. BBC Radio 5 Live. I listen every day. I trust the presenters. There are lots of people calling us tonight. Bowls to Stokes who hammers it for four. The voice of the UK. Nahal Arthanaika. BBC Radio 5 Live. Good afternoon. 18 minutes to four. Buckingham Palace say the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral Castle in Aberdeenshire. A statement has been released saying doctors are concerned for her health. The 96-year-old monarch is described as resting, though, and comfortable. Prince Charles, Camilla and Princess Anne, Princess Anne sorry, are at Balmoral. The BBC understands that a flight carrying seven members of the royal household is expected to land at Aberdeen Airport shortly. The Prime Minister, Liz Truss, says the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news. The Archbishop of Canterbury said he was sending his prayers and the First Ministers of Scotland and Wales joined well wishes in sending their thoughts. A short time ago, I spoke to our Scotland correspondent, Lorna Gordon, from Balmoral. Well, we expect all the Queen's children uh, to be arriving at Balmoral. Prince Charles and Camilla are, we understand, already here. Um, we understand a plane will be arriving at Aberdeen Airport within the next 15 or 20 minutes with seven other members of the royal household. We don't know who, um, but that plane has come from Northolt. They will then make the journey from Aberdeen Airport to Balmoral. Usually that is a journey by car. It takes a little over an hour. Um, so we are expecting all the Queen's children to be here by this afternoon. Uh, this is a very private area. It's a very secluded area. It's an area where both the Queen and her family are very fond of this 50,000 acre estate on Royal D side. The road outside Balmoral is still open to the public and there are police patrolling the main gates as there are always but you do get a sense there are more police than usual here today more members of the public and of course more media standing outside um, but the car park that's just a couple of hundred meters away that is usually packed with with cars of the people visiting the area looking at the the grounds around Balmoral that has been shut to the public today so whilst the area is still open the police are starting to to restrict the number of people who are able to visit the entrance to Balmoral at this time um Will um, members of the public and assembled members of the press uh, see other members of the royal family as they arrive, uh, Lorna? Or are there several entrances to Balmoral? I can imagine there are, the size of Balmoral. I think there are other entrances to Balmoral, but it is usual practice for uh, people visiting the estate to normally arrive by the main gates so if uh, if 
that uh, entourage, those seven members of the household that we are told are arriving at Aberdeen Airport very shortly, do make their way by car uh, here to Balmoral. We would anticipate seeing them uh, come through the gate, which is just a few meters behind me. The, uh, the, the gates to the estate are shut at the moment, but we would anticipate them arriving through these gates. It's uh, normally the back routes are taken by other members of the royal family when they're in residence in other houses in the area, such as Burke Hall, which is uh, Prince Charles's residence in the area. But yes, we would see those other members uh, of, of the family um, arriving. We would anticipate seeing the other members of the fi family arriving and using the, the main gates uh, when they get here. So the Queen would usually spend the summer at Balmoral, is that right, Lorna? So is it unusual yes. for her to be here still in early September? No, this is entirely normal. She's, she loves this area. She's been coming here since she was a, a child. Um, she, she has a great affinity with the area. She arrived here this year, mid-July. It is said by some to be the place where she feels most at home. It, it's a large estate. She's afforded a great deal of privacy here. You know, the public actually from time to time have seen her walking in the hills around the area. She attends the local craft curve and mixes with the congregation here and there's a, there's a lot of loyalty in this area towards both Her Majesty the Queen and her family. Uh, they, they're very they're very respectful and they're very they're very loyal towards her and very protective uh, as well so you know she, it's an area where she can feel very much at home we're always told by people who live in this area where she can she can drive her car take her dogs for a walk she holds an annual ball here, uh, her family hold barbecues, you know, she feels at home, she spends every summer here uh, and it is normal for her to be here at this time of year. Lorna Gordon, our Scotland correspondent at Balmoral. Now, Buckingham Palace say the Queen is under medical supervision at Balmoral Castle in Aberdeenshire. A statement has been released saying doctors are concerned for her health. The 96-year-old monarch is described as resting and comfortable. Prince Charles, Camilla and Princess Anne are at Balmoral, as I've previously stated, and the BBC understands that a flight carrying seven members of the royal household is expected to land at Aberdeen Airport shortly, and we shall bring you news of that as it happens either here in this show or indeed from Drive, which starts in 12 minutes time here on Five Live. But before that, I'm joined now by Dr. Jonathan Spangler, who is a Royal Historian from Manchester Metropolitan University. Jonathan, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, firstly, your reaction to the statement from Buckingham Palace that was issued earlier. Um, it's a it is a bit of a surprise, but um, then on kind of further reflection, it, it isn't really a surprise. You know, it's it's been a very difficult few years, and um, Queen Elizabeth II is um, in her mid 90s, and it's to be expected to to be slowing down and to have medical problems um, arising. So um, it's a very worrying, and I know that that journalists all around um, the world, in fact, are really watching the the UK right now. Um. Give us um, context to a monarch being on the throne for 75 years. And if it, there is any comparison you can make with that length of responsibility and duty to a country that you can compare with. It, yeah, it, it, is, it is a very interesting thing from a historical point of view because in previous centuries, many monarchs lived for five years, 20 years as, as a reigning monarch. And to, to have one for, for more than half of a century is quite extraordinary. And for most people alive today, they can't really think of what it might be like to have a different sovereign. Um, and there certainly are uh, comparisons. Um, Victoria, for example, you know, gave her, her name to an entire era, the 19th century. Um, George III was king for a very, very long time. Um, so there, there is a tradition of having very long British sovereigns and others too. Louis XIV, for example, reigned for 70 years. And so there's this sense that this is the normal day-to-day -day life. We know who the sovereign is and to have that suddenly change is, is unsettling to some people, but also part of the interesting transitions that we always see in history. 
Um, Jonathan, just a moment, please. Um, we understand now that the plane carrying uh, seven members of the royal household has just landed at Aberdeen Airport. We shall bring you more news on that as we hear it. Um, going back to Her Majesty the Queen, I mean, 15 prime ministers, Jonathan, um, mm. an extraordinary record of public service. Um, but this year, of course, we have seen Her Majesty winding down her public duties. But she still had a very busy day on Tuesday, didn't she? Yeah, that, that's right. So it is really something to keep in mind that when most people have retired by their mid-70s, um, the, the Queen of the United Kingdom has continued on for another 20 years. Um, so it is really quite extraordinary. But it is part of the, the, the coronation oath which is to serve for as long as you're able. And there's always been sort of an unwillingness for, for any monarch, whether it's British or French or Spanish, to associate members of the, the family, particularly the heir. Often there's been quite a lot of tension between the sovereign and the heir, sometimes outright hatred amongst the Hanoverians. Um, so I think it, it's actually quite nice that we've, we've passed, I, I guess you could say, into a softer, kinder era where the queen is able to associate her son and her grandson to the day-to-day -day running of the monarchy in a much better way. So it's nice that they're all arriving in Balmoral. It, it really stresses that this is a family, um, not just a singular person um, at the center of the British monarchy. Um, and of course, Jonathan, um, Her Majesty wasn't born to be queen. It, there were circumstances that led to her being queen 75 years ago. Mm. Yeah, I think that that's certainly true. And, and the story of 1936 is, is certainly well known um, to people who, who know about the history of the monarchy and the abdication of her uncle, Edward VIII. Um, but it really kind of underscores, I think, the role that fate plays quite often in the history of any monarchy and that people who might not be thinking that they're in line. Um, and that's about a lot of the research that I've been doing the last couple of years is, is what do you do if you are someone who's really not expecting to be the heir to the throne, and then, and then suddenly you are. Um, it really changes your, your lifestyle, and, and you have to prepare for a life that's, that's quite different, uh, as, as she and her sister Margaret did, as all the, the interviews from the 1930s demonstrate. Um, in all of that time, um, Jonathan, what would you say uh, Her Majesty's most extraordinary qualities are? I think that it's universally agreed, really, that the, the, uh, the word duty is always used and steadfastness and kind of an unwavering commitment to, it has to be said, not just the United Kingdom, but really to the Commonwealth. And I believe that historians in future generations will say that is the great, com the great contribution of the Elizabethan, the second Elizabethan age, um, is really this transition from empire to Commonwealth and the fact that Elizabeth II devoted so much of her life and energy to making sure that that happened and stayed together for such a long time. Um, I, think, I think it can only benefit the global community, um, even as, as an American, I think. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I mean, as a royal historian, um, where, what is her place, Her Majesty's place, in terms of monarchs of the 20th and 21st century? Um, it, of course, is, is something historians never want to, <laughs> to say while it's happening. It's not our, our job. But I, I'm certain that it will be seen that um, Elizabeth II was the last, uh, probably, of the great monarchs from the, the previous era, um, where, where monarchs actually ruled and reigned and... and uh, had a huge ceremonial life. Most of the other European monarchies have downscaled so much since the Second World War that although they still are, are very central to the lives of, of their people in, say, the, the Netherlands or Denmark or Norway, it's not quite seen as the same. Um, so, for example, if you ask any European about the Queen, they tend to know that you mean the Queen of Britain, not Margaret II of Denmark. Um, so, so I think that she represents the very last of, of a great long, long tradition, 
stretching back to the Middle Ages. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Jonathan Spangler there. Earlier I spoke to Robert Jobson, the Royal Editor at the London Evening Standard. I heard a couple of rumours uh, a little bit beforehand um, and um, people had phoned me, so I was, I was waiting for a statement, to be honest. And when the statement came using the words doctors were concerned, that immediately jumps out of the page, doesn't it? Because normally the palace wouldn't use those sort of that sort of language. Um, coupled with the fact that we learned quite quickly that the Prince of Wales, who was in Scotland already, had gone straight to see the Queen and cancelled engagements, along with the Duchess of Cornwall. And now all of the uh, royal family are on their way to Balmoral, including Prince William, although Kate and the children, of course, are staying at Windsor. That does suggest something very serious is afoot. Um, I would say, without it's, in trying to maintain as much respect as possible here that we should be prepared for the worst but pray for the best i think that's probably the best way of putting that indeed um, robert what do you take from the tone of the statement from buckingham palace well the language is very important as i say i think that the language using the word concerned is unusual um and i would be concerned uh, for her health as a result they will be doing everything they can to make sure the doctors that she is as comfortable as possible. But, you know, one thing that is remarkable about Her Majesty is her ability to rally, and she's done that in the past. And I'm sure all of our, all of your listeners will be hoping that she manages to do that, as well as do I and many others. Um, but there she was fulfilling her duties right to the to the to the recently when she swore in um Liz Truss as her 15th prime minister she was at her boxes again um yesterday but couldn't fulfill a meeting with the a zoom meeting with the privy councillors so i think that sort of did say uh, say something too that i mean this is a woman that is so dutiful and so dedicated that she would have done that if she had felt up to it um, talking of that handover of power earlier this week, when it was announced that it would be at Balmoral, breaking with tradition, again, Robert, what were your thoughts? Well, of course, that, that story, I think the Sun broke that story a couple of weeks ago, and then it was confirmed a week or so later that that was going to be the case. I thought that was fair enough, to be honest. Even in this day and age, I think that it, it, as it's, it wasn't the Queen's fault that there was a Tory leadership election when it was. She goes to Balmoral when she does and returns usually in the middle of October. So um, my feeling was that it was the right thing to do. Um, but there, it, was, it was significant. It was a significant moment because it showed the, you know, we were talked about mobility issues, but that really does show the frailty of the monarch rather than just her inability to move um, uh, and fly down. Um, and of course, this year has been an incredibly important year for Her Majesty, hasn't it, Robert? Well, we all saw, didn't we? We all cheered and uh well, most of us when she appeared on the balcony and smiled you know when she appeared with paddington bear um on that wonderful cameo um i think the jubilee celebrations were were, were wonderful and an, 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 apt, an apt tribute to a, a truly remarkable a public servant that was robert jobson the royal editor at the london evening standard um, just to read out some statements, Prime Minister Liz Truss has said the whole country will be deeply concerned by the news from Buckingham Palace this lunchtime, adding, my thoughts and the thoughts of people across our United Kingdom are with Her Majesty the Queen and her family at this time. Coming up now, it's Drive on BBC Radio 5 Live with Tony and Claire. <laughs> 